Lord. <laughs> it shouldn't matter. Nothing matters. Hello. Oh, here we are. We are we are live. Yay. Yay. Well, here we are. So um, welcome all of the only us in the chat. Um, this is the, the very first episode of the Dice of Mind live. Episode one, code one. <laughs> so today we decided to uh, to ring in the new stream with the new edition ish of uh, Infinity, uh, Infinity Code One, which for those not in the know is a uh, more simplified, streamlined rule set for Infinity to help get people into the game because 400 pages of rules is a little daunting for some people. Yeah. <laughs> Amateurs. Um, so with us today, we have our very first wonderful special guest, Obadiah Hampton, not my wife, Lauren. Um, Yay! Welcome, Obi. Welcome, Obi. How are you doing, you beautiful man? How are you doing, you beautiful man? I'm doing pretty good. I'm doing pretty good. Excellent, uh, excellent, uh, excellent, uh, excellent. Yeah. So, uh, Obi, so, uh, let's, Obi. Uh, let's start this right. What are you let's drinking tonight? Right. What are you drinking tonight? Uh, Teton Cider Works uh, Teton Cider Bourbon Works Barrel Peach Cider. Bourbon Barrel Peach Cider. It's, uh, 6.9. It's, uh, it's, it's very good. Nine. It's very oh, good. excellent. Excellent. Oh, excellent. And uh, excellent. John, have you poured and, uh, yourself something John, delicious? You yourself something delicious? I have uh, the remnants of Earl Grey tea, which I have refilled with rum. That's, I think, the right way That's, to drink tea. I think the right way to drink tea. Um, and I am enjoying um, myself enjoying a very nice Franzis Kana nice Vice Beer. Franzis Kana Vice Beer. Um, um, because I'm because up I'm, on Fancy Beers, and Lauren is coming in with the Ginnis. With the Ginnis. I think I got some of that. I think I got some of that. You're welcome. So, You're welcome. So, You're welcome. Um, um, so yeah, this is, uh, so, yeah, this is, this is you know, uh, new for all of us. You know, there are going to be some, uh, be some, <laughs> some learning experiences, some learning experiences and, and some personal and development some and growth that will have to happen afterwards. So, afterwards. so I think... I we're think going to kind of break this up into different kind of segments, into different uh, hobby segments, games uh, we're playing, hobby games and of course the, the main segment the, we're talking about, plus the Q&A you know, we've got you know, from, we've got people, from people, across the people across the internet. So first, let's, so uh, first, let's kick let's, it off uh, talking, a bit, talking a bit about our hobby, our hobby. Uh, since we are in the uh, middle of just a little seasonal flu, right? Seasonal flu, right. Um, we have a bit more time. We have a bit more to, uh, to work on to, our toys. Uh, to work on our toys. Uh, John, why don't you kick it uh, off? John, what are you working on? Kick it off. What are you working on? Well, uh, I've got uh, mostly just a ton of terrain that I've been working on. Uh, entirely too much, really. So I, I can actually show you what I've done, and hopefully Obi will be audible when this happens. Uh, yeah. Yeah. That will be exciting if he's not. He doesn't appear to be in the the thingy, but I guess we'll find out shortly. Here we go. Yeah, in Twitch. Well, so you're yeah, you might not be audible in Twitch, but I will figure that out in a minute. Um, okay. So this is what I have been working on. I've been working on some stuff from uh, uh, Death, it's Ray, Death Ray, right? Death Ray. And uh, yeah, yeah, it's pretty good. I think it's mostly just greens, greens and some uh, sponging. So, I don't know. It yeah. seems fine. Good. You are definitely yeah. not audible, so I need to. Oh, there we go. You were hidden in the mixer, but I guess you are audible because you were just hidden in the mixer. So, seems fine. Crisis averted. Ooh. Yay! So, is this for which table? This is for my on? Mega Ariadna table. Um, yeah. It's uh, basically four yeah. tables long, three, three, three soon to be four tables long, and uh, yeah, it's a lot of <laughs> a lot of stuff to paint. Twelve to sixteen feet. Yeah. Now what you really need to do is you need to start making corner tables so that you can then just make a complete like uh, map all the way around a room that's just put up against the wall. Yeah, I mean, what I really should do is make jigsaw puzzle tables, and then the players have to put them together before they can start playing. I think yeah, that sounds good. That's not going to put uh, extra stress. Yeah. I think a procedural table actually is probably the best way to go. So as we, you know, fire artillery across the tables, we have to generate the tables to put it onto. Yeah. yeah. Wait, are we playing BattleTech or Infinity? Oh, which game was this again? That's right, Infinity. <laughs> awesome. Um, Obi, why don't you uh, tell us a little about what you've been plugging away on with your 3D Wonder and other uh, hobby interests? Oh, I've been, uh, I mean, I finished up all of my terrain for my first table. Um, and uh, since then, I've been working on a, well, I painted up uh, the, the 
months drunker for Rose City Raid, whenever that ends up happening. Oh, God. And uh, then I've been working on my next digital project, which involves making a uh, Nomad Red Fury. So that's what I've been trying to work on and figure out how some more tricks on ZBrush. Holy cow. Oh, hey, Bubba Fett. How's it going? Bubba Fat? Yeah, sorry. Right on, Obi. So you you originally, uh, you've been sculpting the green stuff for years, and now you're making that transition over to ZBrush. How are you, uh, how are you enjoying that? That's uh, still a steep climb. Um, yeah. But I'm, I'm a lot more familiar with it than when I first started, so that's uh, been a little less frustrating. Here's, uh, here's the product of all his hard work. All painted up. Oh, there you go. Boom, the painted John himself. So, um, I know you're interested in commissions. I've also, uh, John and I have discussed an idea that I'd like to pitch to you live. Um, so, no pressure, right? You don't need to accept. But if you did, I'll buy at least three. Um, and that is, we want Achilles, right? Achilles as he is in his beautiful armor, minus... His pectoral armor, his abdomen armor, his leg armor, just like a nice armored mankini. And he needs, okay. he needs to be teabagging a number. Sorry, I thought you said potato sacking a number. <laughs> oh, potato sacking was your <laughs> After all, I just want the I... Achilles potato sacking a number. Maybe when I get my speed up a little bit. <laughs> yeah, you might, you might need different kinds of speed for that. <laughs> Oh man, awesome. So me, let's see here. I have been plugging away on John's Shaz um, after <laughs> after having built uh, all of my, my Code 1 miniatures and supporting uh, White Banner because the White Banner is awesome and I will, I will have them. Um, I've also been working on painting my US Ariana because God damn it, I need to actually finish painting one of my armies. Um, and then I've been also working on a bit of a fever dream of a project, which, oh, I don't have the models, Andy, uh, which is a second edition uh, 40K Orc Army and Dark Angels Army to play the second edition Dark Vengeance uh, campaign with John. Once coronavirus is yep. over, I'm going to make a wish it was still going on. <laughs> so, so, been a little bit, I mean, you know, just a little more time than usual, but although weirdly not. Yeah, right. Uh, when you, yeah. <laughs> I've just been, it's been crazy busy. I mean, like, part of it is, like, learning Twitch and how to set all this stuff up, so that's definitely part of what's been sucking up my time, but... Right. Yeah, you're just like, I... I, I there's just this huge inundation of... Guess what I edited on, uh, on, on, uh, on my hobby time, and there's just, like, all these people making crazy progress, and I'm just like, I don't know how. But hey, you know, <laughs> good on you. Right, like I've got people asking, like, are you like playing so many games on Tabletop Simulator? And it's like, uh, no, but I've got some red planter boxes in the backyard and food for when this apocalypse continues. Yeah, right? <laughs> like, it's like everybody's time to about... play some victory gardens or something. Yeah, exactly. Oh, man. Um, yeah, make one in my apartment, but I'll give it a shot. Victory garden? <laughs> yeah, just throw down some mulch yeah, yeah. in one of the rooms. I mean, I mean, I've seen. You've got that thick carpet. You could definitely have something take seed in there. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I think I so. Mean, Sharon's really been into gardening in the backyard, and now that she's had more time to do that, she's like, well, now I have time to put gardens inside the house. So that's been happening, too. <laughs> yeah, I'm waiting for you to get, like, your whole hydroponic with the lights inside the oh, garage. We, well, we already have too. part of that. It's, I don't know. There's there's a lot going on. I, I, just, I just hung up some African violets in the bedroom. It's like screwed some pots into the wall. They're like half. They're like half a pot, you know. So one side's flat. Yeah. But I don't know. That's pretty nice. Brightens up the room. And then she said that there's a bunch to help with air quality or something. Specifically, you know, <laughs> to get rid of my man smell or whatever. <laughs> and I was like, all right, honey, I can see what's happening. The air quality. Sorry yeah. about the, the, the important things. Yeah, I was saying. I thought the air quality was uh, was pretty good right now. Because I because I'm not over here. <laughs> Yeah, right? Yeah. Apparently I'm missing your phone. Apparently. <laughs> so, um, let's talk the next segment. I guess we're going to talk a little bit about the games we've been playing. I've played precisely one game since uh, since all this happened, and it was against John. So, that makes it pretty easy. John, 
uh, has an insane rig set up in his house with, I don't know, feels like 35 different cameras Something set up at like different that, angles yeah. around a game table where you then are my hands to move my models yeah. across. And then I make you check all the lines of fire. Um, it's actually not as bad as so it this sounds. this is what Adam sees. Uh, this is actually Eric, but this is what Adam sees. Oh, right. So uh, all of these tables, all these cameras can switch positions. So, you know, you can maximize the, the camera in question. Uh, and then, you know, Adam says, move that guy there. No, the other guy. No, your other left. And then eventually <laughs> what we expect to happen happens. And uh, yeah. So yeah, I have I've it all written up. You can see all the, the exciting nonsense that ensues but yeah i ask it it was a good game though <laughs> it was it was um yeah, you can talk about you can but, talk about uh how it went if you want there's there's your list if you need a refresher oh, oh my god right no it was um we'll just say i was there for the experience i was along for the ride the dice on the other hand did not agree with me oh my god but the yeah. coolest part about the dice is that you have that keyed out camera where you roll the dice and you can see it on the screen on Twitch. Yes, yes. All in all of its horrible keyframes are like uh, uh, chroma keyed uh, glory. I don't know. One of these days, your proper blue mouse pad. Yeah, that would really help. Actually, getting. I tried doing it with a pillowcase. Not the same. No. No. Not the same. You got to get that like lime key green. Yeah. <laughs> No, it was it, it's so, one one thing though is that we ended up switching tables cuz this mountain table is not conducive to playing over remote anything. You know, what? it definitely added to the challenge. For sure. Just a little too much of that elevation on yeah, that one. Yeah, I'm trying to find a good picture. Yeah, like you can do like this is a valid fire lane on that table. Like there's a keyhole underneath this bridge oh, right. and it's just gross. And then there's all kinds of like random fun stuff that happens on the mountain. It's it's a really fun table. I really enjoy it, uh, but it's it is definitely more challenging. So we moved to we moved to this table, um, the strong post alpha table, which is a little better. Yeah. Um, because it's more boxy, so it's easier to sort of predict where the shadow zones are and like how to draw a line of fire when you're looking at it through a tiny view screen yeah. and you're not. You're, you don't, you're not there. I'm looking forward to our next game on that. Um, Bubba Fat has a question for you, Obi. Are you up for making commission work using uh, making some STLs? Uh, I mean, not at the moment. I'm trying to to, to learn a little too much right now. So uh, I just I don't feel like I have the speed to really tackle a commission piece and what I'm actually trying to work on. Makes sense. Uh, your hourly wouldn't work once out. I can, once I can get that set up, then yeah. <laughs> yeah, but Obi is running a uh, a sculpting Twitch uh, when he has time, though. If you want to plug that? I don't know when yeah. your next your next, your next uh, stream is planned to be. Uh, so planning to do it on uh, Friday again, and then I'll probably end up trying to do Mondays uh, more regularly. Yeah. Off. And you'll be able to catch that either on your channel or uh, if people if people can't find it because they can't remember this on Nehemiah, yeah. um, then or, it's a, well, actually remember the four five. What was that? <laughs> or remember the four hundred five that's after right. it. Right. Yeah. Exactly. Um, it'll also be uh, be rebroadcast on uh, the Dice of Biden, I think, as well as Bromite yep, Academy. Bromite Academy. Yep. Right. So you can find it all over the place. Yeah. Speaking of upcoming streams, um, Adam and I are going to try to play a Code One game using my ridiculous multicam setup on Thursday in the evening, sometime Pacific US time. Um, so it'll be our first Code 1 game. We'll try to, I mean, it's it's our personal goal to try to finish three Code 1 games in the time it takes to somebody else to play, a, you know, a normal game. Uh, but uh, we will we will see how it goes. We'll try to slow it down to make sure that we, we capture all the rules, interactions and stuff. But it'll be a fun time. Fantastic. So, John, you've been uh, a bit more prolific on the gaming front. How's that going for you? Not too bad. Um, I think since this whole thing started, I, let's see. Um, let's see. I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven games in since this whole thing started. So maybe like once a week, twice a week occasionally. Um, oh, yeah, yeah, it's been pretty fun. I, I actually um, 
played OB a few times, uh, trying out the new White Banner versus Valorheima. Uh, I really like both. Uh, now that I've played, when I first played, I, it was uh, my my White Banner versus OB's Valorheima, and um, I definitely like White Banner more. But now that I played Sval a few more times, I'm I, I think I'm I, they're they're pretty close to even now. Um, yeah. I think there's a lot of, uh, I mean, I, it was definitely difficult playing Sweller Heimo without a good, like, first hand look at the table. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but, I, and I think that's really where they're going to be, uh, you know, that's where a lot of their, their usefulness comes into the play is because of the different kind of tricks that they have with their movement. Yeah, they're super, uh, like, basically, if you thought, you know, Pano was good at shooting. Imagine if Pano was good at shooting and could be anywhere it needs to be to draw a line of fire to you. That's Svalarima in, in a nutshell. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I'm, I've been very impressed with their, their movement capability and their, their tool set. Um, well, what about their their lack of uh, marker states, smoke, airborne I mean, deployment? I don't know. I, I kind of feel like uh, being able to just walk up the side of the table and shoot Yi Mao is pretty damn good. Which is exactly what happened in my game against Obi here. Yeah, yeah that was the second game. That was unfortunate. Yeah. That's what I wanted to do to you in my game when I was playing yeah. <laughs> Winter Four, yeah. but it didn't happen. <laughs> yeah. So like, well, it sort of did, right? So, so I have a, I had a Varg HRL up here, and then there was a pile of Yimao in this, this corner over here, and I ended up just taking the shot across the table. I mean, you, you sort of got it actually. Um, yeah, I think I just got stuck up because I had to deal kind of uh, get in a gunfight with your tag yeah, at a really bad range. Because yeah. you were, you, I mean, you, yeah, well, that and you failed a bunch. I, I passed a bunch of arm saves, like a like a crazy. Yeah, yeah. So, that didn't help so you managed to get up there <laughs> without too much difficulty, and then there, you, I think this interaction here was like three or four orders, and the K one was just bouncing off my tag, um, which is a which yeah, is kind of yes. Yeah. Uh, but then you you went and just straight up wrecked Lei Gong. <laughs> I mean, you're just like, nope, goodbye Lei Gong, and Lei Gong died yeah, immediately. Yeah. Uh, it was just it was just lucky that uh, the other two, you know, you ran out of orders and you couldn't kill the other two Yi Mao. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, they, yeah, no, they. I, I really like the, really like the I Varg. Like the I also like the car. Like something about some those guys. Those just, guys is just really fun. Really fun. Yeah. <laughs> fairly inexpensive. Fairly inexpensive. Uh, I mean, uh, I mean, semi expensive. Semi expensive for one wound models, models and, and no marker no state, marker but, state but, but you know, with mimetism, you know, with climbing, climbing, climbing plus, and then, and then uh, they're uh, also, they're MSB, also MSB, 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 something, uh, something like that. Like, I don't know. They got over here. Yeah, they have MSV one, one, and uh, they have mimetism, yeah. which is yeah. pretty brutal. Um, and then, and then multi rifle, multi rifle, two fear box, the engineers, the engineers, and yes, the Blitzen for sure. Although yeah. the, like, yeah. it's, they're they're really strong, but I mean the Varg are just like, what is this profile? This like heavy rocket launcher, light yeah. shotgun guy, yeah. like this right. this right. Harris is obscene. Like, it's from the it's from the okay, well I have all the things. I have a tool to tackle any problem in the game, really. Yeah, the only right. thing that I, right. I can't really deal with is like a. Is a car curry, but then even then I can just shoot it a bunch. That seems fine. Yeah, that yeah. Tends to take, tends to take, take, care, of take care of them. Okay, Eric says that somebody's causing an echo. Uh, looking at my mixer, I would assume that it's Obi because whenever Adam talks, both things go up. Oh yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. Let's see. Or maybe it's, it's Adam. It. I'm see not if it's sure. Fixes it. Uh oh. Uh, well, I mean, actually, um, uh, here, let's see uh, here. say some stuff. Uh, uh, is it me? No, is it it's, me? Uh, it's probably this? Adam. Am I the one doing this? Oh, no. Oh, it's no. Me it's me? How do I, how do I like, fix well, this? How do I, I like, fix it this? It might be both of you. <laughs> <laughs> Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Um... Here, I've got the oh, Let's good. try that. All right. Go there. Go there. Might cut down a little bit. Might cut down a little bit. Let's see. How about now? How about now? Testing, 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 uh, testing. 
Sorry, do it again. Hello. No, I Hello. Just seem to be doing the thing. Okay. Okay. All right. Cool. Well, All right. Cool. Well, let's, uh, let's, uh, let's carry on. Let's then. carry so, on. Then. So, Obi, you've been playing, playing some games on Tabletop Simulator, table table simulator right here. Right here? Yeah, I've been yeah. I've played, I've played the two, I've played the two with games with John, but then also been playing a number of games with Tabletop Simulator. Um, I'm, I'm. I, I think what I I've been liking, I've been liking most the most about it is that, it is that you can, can allows you to allows you to uh, uh, experiment with experiment pretty much with pretty much any army because, because you don't have to worry about uh, you know, having the models having or, models or you know, finding a you know, proxy finding a proxy and things like that and you, don't have, that. And you don't have to remember you know what you're proxying, you know, what you're proxying with what, with what. Um, um, there's, there's some fiddliness, some fiddliness with just the movement the movement be that can be kind of frustrating especially especially starting first starting out just how often you'll try and move a model close to a building and up and then end up you know tries you know, to go on top, of the, go on top of the building and then it falls down and put it down other than that it's pretty interesting pretty interesting um um it's it's in some ways, in some ways, you have, you have a little bit of a little bit of as, as much is, problem uh, as uh, set up John set up though with just the line of sight because a lot of times you'll end up uh, zooming in on an area and then forget to zoom out, zoom out while you know, while, you know, while your opponent's moving, moving stuff and then they end up they uh, end up you know, uh, you, you, know you miss, you miss some arrows, arrows yeah. and like that. Oh, yeah, I have the same yeah. experience in tables. Like somehow, the, like somehow uh, the uh, it's just not it's as just not as like the, 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 the line of sight is, line not, is not as intuitive. Yeah, the well, yeah, the well, I, mean, I mean that makes a lot of sense. That makes a lot of sense though, right? Because, because when you're when you're playing a game, normally you're, 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 you're kind of while you're watching, while you're watching, you're always doing, you're always kind of glancing for what you guys as a fire are, especially especially in the case of probably hidden deploy models. You're also not you don't have as much control over your. You know where you're viewing when you're in you're in right. person right. because you're stuck because on your, stuck on your side. Side. So it's not like so you're zooming in, like in, in on your opponent's miniatures, on miniatures moving, around, moving around or things like that. Things like so, that. So it uh, it uh, you have sometimes sometimes forget, forget and have, and have, have like less of a view global view you really than can. you really can. Um, um, so it's I don't so know. It's, it's I don't know. It's funny because you have a much more control over your view because of that. Because of that, you end up losing losing some of the. Uh, uh, you know the focus. You know the focus. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. gotcha. Interesting. Yeah. Interesting. I yeah. I haven't had a chance, had a chance give the, to give uh, the uh, give the tabletop simulator, simulator yet. a chance yet. I know that Peter yet. Franco uh, really wants me to. Wants me to. He's playing a ton he's of playing it. A ton <laughs> of it. I think he <laughs> did the. Uh, I think he did the. I think he did the. It was evolved. It was evolved. Did the, uh, online, the tournament. online tournament with the white yeah. with the white yeah. guys. Uh, yeah. Uh, he was. No. He was. I think it was separate. Separate. Oh really? Ball with Sec was doing a. Like a league, just kind of thing, and then uh, the white noise guys were doing their own separate tournament. Oh, interesting! Yeah, man, multiple leagues, tournaments, etc., going at once. Yeah. Uh, well, very, very cool. So, uh, speaking of speaking of playing online, I actually think that the Code One rules. Hey, check out that segway. Segway uh, would probably lend themselves really well to this online play where you. Got a little less to fiddle with. Um, so these rules came out Monday, so it's been all uh, over the day. John Obi and I have all had a chance to peruse them and kind of put together some of our first impressions and thoughts of the rules. Impressions and thoughts of the rules. So we take it over to my screen. Boop, boop, boop. There we go. The lovely cover. There we go. For the rule book. We're not going to go over every single page of the rules, but we definitely want to talk a little bit about what you can expect from the game and how it compares to, I guess it would be how it compares to N3, the current edition of Infinity. And then maybe a little bit about where we think this might move going forward with the N4, the fourth edition of Infinity coming out a little later this summer. A little later this summer. So... So nice little rule book. It's free. So anybody nice who wants to check this out, they just have to go to, I believe it's infinity, the universe.com. Infinity, the universe.com. There we go. And you can find not only the rules, but their army builder, which rules, but their army builder, which like that looks super rad. That, um, but, um, but first let's go over, first let's go over a little bit of the rule book. It is a brisk 104 pages long, um, which makes it about one quarter the amount of rules that are in the regular, uh, infinity rule book. Um, starts off giving a little bit of background about the four uh, the four factions. There's only uh, these four in the uh, initial release of Code 1 to kind of, again, pare it down for newer players. But the four factions they picked, I think, do a good job of kind of covering um, some important bases of the game. 
Um, so the first one is Panoceana, which I feel bad because people kind of think of it or refer to it as the generic faction. Um, but they're the faction that is good at shooting, and this is a game about shooting, right? So it's like, this, these are the guys with the big guns. They are the most, well, some of the most technologically advanced humans. Um, One might argue that, that Aleph isn't really human, so. There you go, right. Um, and then they have their rivalry with uh, Yujing, which is um, kind of a conglomerate of the Asian countries minus Japan. Uh, they have seceded in the story of the game. Um, and so the things that kind of define the two of those right off the bat, uh, Pano is big guns. They shoot guns. They shoot guns well. Um, we're using, at least in my experience, and John, correct me if I'm wrong, because you play them a little more than I do, but they're they're kind of a mixed arms faction. Um, um, they have access to a lot yeah. of tools, and they have a lot of so a lot of pretty solid yeah tools. basically uh i would say that yujing and nomads have the most stuff um but yujing packages it in a way that uh it basically sort of falls into a bunch of like like the there's a bimodal distribution of like stuff that is good right so if you look at like um like a histogram of amount of units that are like super super good um and then like uh, like yeah, so the y-axis is number of units, and then the x-axis is like uh, the quality, right? So the Yujing is like there's not much in the middle. There's a bunch of like really good stuff and like like filler, and I'm like I'm lumping Quangxi in with filler, and they're not bad at all, but like sure, you know, sure. they're not a hawk tower. And nomads have like a more like a bell shaped right. curve, so they they both have access to all these like tools and stuff. But Yujing definitely there's like there's a stark divide between you know what you what you're gonna end up spending orders on. Um, Right. I mean, yeah, no, I think that's a really good way to describe it. Because, like you said, they've got incredibly powerful units like the Hawk Tau, um, which, you know, for new players, these are like super heavily armored troops with therm optic camouflage that can uh, deploy hidden on the table. And then when they show up, they're hard to hit and they shoot you to death. They're awful to face. Uh, <laughs> um, and then they back now, them up. The key difference here in uh, Code 1 is that they can't deploy off the table, they, they oh, aren't you're right. on the table. You're right. So in the, in the more streamlined Code One rules, you're right. There is no hidden deployment. Um, but they can think, still be uh, camouflaged, though, which is pretty awesome. Yeah, I think judging by the units that are available in Code One for using, um, they definitely do a lot of what John was talking about. Where it's like they've got the really powerful guys, yeah, I mean, and they've like, got backup. This, yeah. Crazy. yeah, yeah, right. He's a beefcake. So awesome. <clears throat> totally yeah. fantastic. So. The uh, the third faction in Code One currently is O12, which is basically uh, space cops, right? They um, they are kind of like the governing force of all humanity. Um, they have some really powerful technology. They govern an artificial intelligence called Aleph, um, and they're they're yeah they're they're very elite. Um, they have some really cool equipment, specifically the Riot Stopper, which is basically the Judge Dread Riot Foam gun that just glues people down in place. Um, you know, they're there to protect humanity. Um, and what they're protecting humanity against, other than itself, uh, is the Combined Army. So this is the fourth faction. The Combined Army is kind of like what... I like to think of them as what intelligent Tyranids would be. Right? So if instead of being driven by instinct, they're driven by logic... Um, but ultimately the same goal. They are out there uh, to unify all of the species under one great umbrella, which is the combined army. And I'm absolutely not biased in that regard at all. Um, the combined army have some insanely advanced technology um, compared to the humans. You know, they don't they don't have it in uh, in code one. This particular weapon called the um, um, the Sepsiter, but it like shoots nano bees into the cybernetic implants in your brains and turns you into zombies no 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 pretty it turns rad. You into friends they're friends yeah friends exactly <laughs> to to yeah, willing participants exactly. towards the the great plan of the combined which is uh to transcend and uh you know escape the universe yeah exactly um one of my favorite things about the the fluff with the combined um is that if the combined wanted to at any point in time, like they could just delete humanity. Really what their forces are doing is infiltrating humanity and testing them to see if they're worth the time to 
to assimilate yeah. or destroy. I mean, <laughs> so it's, and they it's, they are also having just like the, the the biggest suicide run through the the one unstable wormhole that leads to humanity oh, yeah, from exactly. their their main space. So I think that's somewhere in the book one of the books it says it's like a 75 percent attrition rate of their ships that are coming through the worm gate Damn. and they just keep sending them right? <laughs> because I mean, they're like well we got enough people we span galaxies yeah exactly they're a galaxy spanning empire and hum- humanity is just this blip <laughs> one wonders after they escape will they uh return the mass of the universe like in the three body problem who knows oh, <laughs> that's a that's a deep cut for those for those out there Right. <laughs> um, so that is like the the one second intro of the factions. Honestly, like it's worth reading just a little bit of fluff if you're at all curious about the game. Um, so into the rules itself, it starts off with actually kind of funny, a more streamlined version of the streamlined version of the rules to get people into the game. Um, but really, the whole point of this introductory thing is to kind of introduce the core concepts of the game one by one to people who are we're picking it up for the first time, right? So if you're not sure how, you know, this game treats things like line of fire and distances, it kind of walks you through that and then it progressively builds up more rules um, until you get to, I guess, what would be the full version of the rules for code one. Um, one of the things, if, if again, if you're not totally familiar with Infinity that makes Infinity so, uh, so special is this concept of an ARO, um, which is the automatic reaction order which essentially means that every time your opponent does something, you get to respond to it. Um, if you're to put this into, to you know, like 40K terms, right? It'd be like if one of your soldiers is out, you know, out in the open and you fire at me, but the other guy doesn't just stand there and take it, he shoots back. Um, so it's a lot less of this feeling of you go, I go, and more about what tactical decision do you make in response to the tactical decision that your opponent made. Um, so there's always things that you can do they have a direct impact on the game as opposed to just taking conversations. Yeah, it's it's to the casualties. point where like I play other games and uh, I the inability to act like really stresses me out. Right. It it is kind of you're just like, ah, come yeah. on. <laughs> right, right. When's I, it my turn? When's it my turn? The the big caveat here too is that uh, when you are in the active turn, uh, then you have a uh, a higher potential because you have uh, a higher burst, whereas people that are reacting to you, their guns are reduced to just one shot. Uh, so you still have the advantage of uh, when it is your turn, but you do have to be careful. You can't just run out into the open, or it's kind of likely that you might just die. Yeah, exactly. And that's that's a that's a, a really good point you make is that you don't have you always have the advantage or you generally have the advantage when it is your turn, right? Because you do have that, that extra burst, which means you're rolling more dice. So a higher chance of success. Um, but really the, the, the big thing is that it's always deadly to get shot at, right? Like, if, yeah. So really you your, your turn, your, the, what you're playing for with your advantage is, uh, you know, choosing which fight to get into. Um, yeah. Because if you just go running out with, you know, your weakest guy trying to kill, shoot, take pot shots at something that's very strong, that has a lot of negative modifiers, it's likely that you'll just miss and yeah. they'll shoot you back. Unless you crit it. Yeah. It's, yeah, and then yeah. crits are a thing. Like, even, you know, even the worst shot can get lucky yeah. and hit you in the eye. <laughs> it's, it's Which all is a over. nice segue to talking about how they've changed in uh, Code uh, 1. Uh, I was just oh, yeah. So that was the, that's, hey, there you go. <laughs> Love it. Um, so what's funny is they have and they haven't they've changed the effects of the ammunition types and how they resolve criticals but they haven't changed what criticals do right so a critical in infinity is winning the face to face roll and applying the critical effect of the ammunition which was often automatically wounding Um, now it seems that most of the the, the weapons uh, force an additional save Right, so if you get crit with a with a combi rifle, right, you're going to suffer two armor saves instead of one armor save. Uh, or if you get crit with a missile launcher instead of three armor saves for explosive, you'll take four. Um, but there's still crits with things that are non-lethal um, that will then, like, for example, uh, critting with carbonite, right, with the, the hacking program. Carbonite just automatically um, sends you to immobilized. It doesn't actually cause two saves uh, against the BTS. 
Oh, I didn't catch that. That's uh, good to know. Yeah, so they ha they haven't changed the they haven't changed the way criticals no. work mechanically before the ammunition is taken into account. Uh, so critical with carbonite forces the target to perform an additional saving throw. Oh, is it on carbonate? Shoot. Okay, bad example. Yeah. I definitely saw something <laughs> in here, and I can't jump pages. Uh, uh, I think the spotlight is maybe what you're thinking of. That oh, one just maybe, automatically yeah. buzzes it rather than because yeah, there's it's no saving uh, throw for, yeah. there's no save to it. Yeah. yeah. But still, it's it's still tied to the the critical effect of the ammunition type, and they've just across the board changed how those work. Um, yeah. But yeah, no. So it's it's. I'm I really like these rules, having read them. Um, yeah. They definitely feel. They don't necessarily feel more streamlined, and that they dumbed down the rules. But it's more that this is only you know eighty percent of the rules of the game, or sixty percent of the rules of the game. I, I think they've done some things uh, that are good that are not necessarily dumbing down the rules, but just kind of uh, collapsing them. Uh, so yeah. some of those things where they were very similar, like take dodge, for example, there were used to be three different skills for basically the same effects that you now get with dodge, um, which was, you know, change facing and engage uh, right. and then the dodge itself. And all of those kind of acted differently. Uh, so that could be kind of confusing for newer players and even veteran players, uh, you know, forgetting which one they're actually wanting to do uh, <laughs> to get the desired yeah. effect. Right, right. It's uh, it's there's no longer change face or engage. They're simply effects of the dodge, right? So dodging, you know, what was change face before is just the minus three mod for the enemy being in zone of control yeah, and the, out of of the special casing between yeah. turns and stuff too. Yeah, right. So that's actually really cool too, what you mentioned. So because you get to dodge in the active or you get to move in the active turn with dodge, you can theoretically dodge a value that is higher than your second move value. Right? Because you're dodging yeah. two inches plus your kinematica, which is now just dodge plus inches. Um Yeah, so some of those real fast units, uh like some of your heavy infantry guys can end up dodging uh further but it does take a roll so that, you know you're risking the possibility of right one your second move one thing that's definitely interesting here is there is no engage and i don't know if that's something that's going to carry over to n4 but the way it's handled in code one is that when you move with a successful dodge you can use that to move into base contact yeah uh, i mean I'm, I'm hoping that stays the same it's because, just cleaner uh, i think it's feel like that i think it's, yeah i it's think much it's cleaner in it but the downside is if if something really fast like a Suzanne or a bike zooms past you, if they finish, yeah, you can. Yeah, you won't be able to engage them as they drive by. I mean, that's that's yeah. kind of okay, I guess, right? Because it does take some. No, but it's so systematic. It, have the guy tackling the other dude off the motorcycle. Well, I know, but it it does it does, like it. <laughs> you you end up having to plan your movement a little more carefully as the active player in that scenario. To make that happen, because it won't always like it's not a freebie, right? Even if you have like an eight six move bike like out of JSA or something, you still have to you still have to right. be careful about not ending your move within range. And and you can do that now because there's pre measuring. Yeah, so that's that's actually the next thing I wanted to bring up, um, and I was trying to find it, but we can just talk about that. Is that when you when you move, you get to like John mentioned, you get to measure all of the places you can theoretically move to. Um, the really important distinction that I was trying to find is that you must first declare that you are moving before you measure. Yeah, so, so you that's... you have to declare what, which movement skill you are using because there's also jumping because you can jump yep. between you know two buildings possibly um, or you can climb um, and you do have to declare what one of those you are using before you start measuring. Yeah. Yep. Exactly. Exactly. And that is there. We go. That's it right here. Um, so in the order ex expenditure sequence, um, if a moves, if movements are declared, you measure where the troop can move and places the troop at the final point of movement. Um, so the interesting here is that there's no falling, right? So you can't use super jump to jump off a building, or you can't voluntarily walk off a building if you can't then safely get to the bottom of that building with that move. Um, so. You might think you're far enough to get across, you declare jump, you are stuck long skill jumping no matter what, 
you, if you can't reach all the way across, then you're moving somewhere else. Well, if you if you um, really can't do anything, you so, you idle basically. There's a there's a clause somewhere in there for that. Yeah, also true. Yeah, yeah. yeah I mean, it's kind of. I don't know. I mean, I'm not sure how I feel about that. Like, it was it was convenient sometimes to be able to do the jump. I mean, do you think this is a response to that? You know, kind of correct, but perhaps uh, people yeah. people killing their uh, lieutenants oh. and things like that by jumping I, in place <laughs> i don't think it was as much that as they didn't want to introduce how falling works to the game to for code one yeah so it is something that's possible that they just yeah, left out yeah that's true uh, it might be back in, in for but because it's because it's a pretty massive change yeah. for super jump troops to not be yeah. able to safely fall yeah, their move huge. value like that changes a lot of things and it definitely uh, like even just like jumping to shoot a missile is a uh, is a pretty big deal. You yeah, can't do that anymore, right? really. I mean, you can, but your range is a lot less. You basically lose a whole, you know, two inches more or less of height. And then, yep, and then yep. it also changes uh, units like the Shikami and Bran, who have super jump and climbing plus, so they can do you know Mario wall jump sort of nonsense. Um, right. Right. And uh, yeah, that's that's actually super important for those 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 units that I mentioned too to be able to do that. So I hope I hope they retain that in in N four. Well, yeah. And the thing yeah. is, like super jump, super jump was always more effective at getting you down from a building than getting up, right? Like you're still yeah. moving four inches up. When you're getting down from a building, you can move four inches out and then fall four inches down. Um, or you could actually drop eight inches. Oh yeah, right. If you were four four, yeah, combined. you can, Yeah. yeah. So that's that's going to really change the the mobility of those super jump troops. Um, something actually that I meant to, to bring up a little bit earlier. I don't know if you guys caught this, and I feel like it's future proofing, but they do have a definition distinct uh, to distinguish between inside and totally. Yeah, inside. I'm not sure what they're planning with that. Yeah, um, I was thinking possibly for things like G-Sync and, or fire teams, which would oh. then because it used to be that you could basically be towed into somebody's zone of control, um, right? As a right. G-Sync model, that was my first <laughs> first thought. Yeah, that. that makes sense. Yeah, I'm a little I'm a little curious how that's going to play out. Um, there's a few things that I've definitely noticed that are. Like again, that seem like they're future proofing. Like they don't really uh, relate to anything that's currently in the rules, like the remote driver, the rem, the rem driver skill. Um, yeah. And this one, where it's like, you know, they're they're thinking about what they're doing next, which I kind of enjoy, right? They're they're giving this definition to work with as a new player because it is going to come up. Right. Right. Um, yeah. Yeah, it's really interesting. So I think that was pretty cool. Um, another interesting thing has to do with movement, which is the ability to pass through a narrow corridor. Um, which is right there. And this is something that I think is absolutely massive uh, and makes setting up terrain much less of a giant headache. Yeah. Um, but basically, yeah, the short of it is um, you can move through a gap that is half the width of your base, but you have to end where your base can fit. Right, so essentially, this means that like when you've got a you know a narrow gap between buildings, it's just not quite wide enough for something on a on a bike to move through, uh, especially like an impetuous biker. They will be able to move through it, provided you know they can they can clear the gap. And you also can't move move to clear the gap, as shown in this example. Yeah, I mean this this makes um, me wonder what they're going to do about terrain rules too, right? Because if you can if you can squeeze oh, through a gap, yeah. that, I mean, first of all, are they going to retain the stop when you touch terrain thing? And if they don't, then okay, fine. But then the second thing is, if they do, can you move through the gap now? Like, if you imagine, like, especially on the airplane right. table, like, if you have two pieces of terrain that are like this, yeah. that neck down, like, can Kuroshi Rider just, like, shoot through that and then claim that she's gone through the gap, right? And therefore, like, shimmied through or whatever? Yeah. Oh, not well, met the, not yeah, actually exactly, got in contact right. with, yeah. with the terrain. I get what you're saying. Yeah. That'll be interesting. So, but I mean, like, I, I do want to spend I, a second on how awesome the graphics are. Like, they've done a great oh, job. Yeah. Like, there's there's very little ambiguity. Like that example uh, of showing you can't move, move. It's just like, oh, all right, I know exactly what's going on now. I totally understand. Good work. So, yep. Good work, CB. You yep. did it. 
And they've, I've noticed that a lot of their graphics, which are showing line of fire, are done mm -hmm. with 3D models, which is just so much, yeah, like you said, there's, it's so yeah. much less ambiguous. And then, I mean, there was a whole, like, kind of battle reporty thing they did uh, with the 3D models, right? Where they were like, like the fuselier would be like, whoosh, whoosh, you know? Oh, right. So that was kind of, that was kind of neat. Right, right. Um, so another, another thing that I noticed, um, that actually this one right here is really fun where they clarify that vaulting, like this guy can't vault this obstacle because the finished position is lower than his silhouette because that obstacle is against the ledge of a, you know, yeah, the ledge like, on the floor. So Clint was talking about that on <clears throat> his Facebook post. Um, so he, I think his interpretation was that, uh, you can't use it to climb anymore. Which I, I'm not sure I understand where he's coming from. I mean, this this example is pretty clear, right? Like you can't just like fall more, right? Oh, he's he means like getting on top of a box. I but like I mean like maybe maybe it's like, uh, like for example, if you had um, a pile of boxes like kind of forming a stairway up to a building that you ordinarily wouldn't allow yep, be allowed yep, to yep. vault, but there's no question that you can vault it. Uh, by going up the stair, like off the pile of boxes, right? But then the other side of the building is taller than you, so it would fit this criteria. But it, but you're not doing it in one move, so is that is that cool? You know? Yeah, I I, I don't I don't. I think I you can still use boxes. Yeah, yeah. To get up I mean, I I, I just building. you know just raising it because I. Yeah. Sorry, yeah. Clint. <laughs> but no, that's that it might have been one of those things that. Yeah. Um, so one thing that is interesting though here with vaulting that I noticed, and again, I don't know if this will make it over, but uh, at least in code one, you can't vault over something that has a taller silhouette than you. Right. It is not based on mm -hmm. silhouette value. And I think that this, even though I prefer the value, I think most people, I think people often played it wrong and just went off right. the height of the silhouette. This really only comes up with bikes and things that are S4. You mean um, move through yeah. guys with the... Uh... Okay, yeah. So you, yeah. you can't move through your own... Okay, yeah. So current. So in the current rules, a S2 trooper cannot walk through right. a bike. Right? Yeah. But the bike can walk through the yeah. S2. In code one, that is reversed. Right. In code yeah. one, it's not based on the silhouette value. It's the height of the silhouette, which I don't... I do not prefer the change, um, but I think it is more in alignment with how it's a also lot of it's play. also more elegant, right? Like you just sort it's, of have to remember one thing. It's, it's more yeah, it's like are you are you taller than the yeah. thing? Okay, cool, you can do the thing. Yeah, right. And the the only thing I don't like about it is I really liked the idea of the motorcycle like zipping between people. Well, um, I mean, you sort of still can do. if there's a gap that's wide enough. Oh, right. Yeah, so does that I work? Think it's fine. Yeah, I suppose it would. Yeah, exactly. I mean, to to a JSA biker, everything just looks like a traffic cone. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, yeah. So I guess I guess in general, that moving through narrow gaps thing probably opens up just a, a whole lot of maneuverability that we haven't even really concerned. Yeah. Concerned. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see. I mean, like, yeah, it, there's a, but it's only to the. Can we go back to that? Actually, is that is that just is it just the width of the silhouette? says uh, any surface they move on must be at least half see, as wide as their base. I'm just, I'm just trying to think about Those situations surface. where like uh, there's like a low hanging bridge and an S7 tag can't fit underneath. But So it sounds like it can't, it can't duck and squeeze under. Correct. Yeah, okay. I think that's still the case. Although I'd be with you for, for changing that to do half the height and half yeah, the width. Yeah, right? Just sort of like cram a tag into a cubicle sort of thing for like its movement well i also like the idea of like being able to like go underneath a uh like a, a the, oh yeah yeah you want to uh, do the of, like a big uh, truck shoot, um hobbs and shaw rotating micro motorcycle yes. Idris elba thing yeah yes exactly i'm glad you understand <laughs> i want to do that thing <laughs> Um, it totally makes lots of sense and it's a very logical thing to yeah. do. Why wouldn't you do it? Um, so yeah, here we go. We have the example of the Fusilier 
uh, only jumping four full inches because that is as far as you can jump because falling right. doesn't happen anymore. Um, and then the guy who attempts to fall six inches won't do it. Which is smart boots you kick in and won't let him move. <laughs> well, I'm also, so the thing is like, I'm also a little bit pro this because like, I don't know about you, but if somebody told me like, yeah, you have to jump over that thing, I probably wouldn't do it. I would climb. I'd be like, oh, I'll be right there. If it looks, if it looks far enough, I'm not going to just be like, sure thing, boss, whatever you say. Breaking my ankle means the doctor gets to accomplish an objective and try out that experimental drug. Like, uh-uh. Yeah. I'm not oh, buying Exile that. Exile8585 brings up the point that uh, regarding vaulting, each step of the vault has to have room for the base. Oh, interesting. Interesting. I wonder... Mm. Well, that's not the case in this uh, in this exact... Yeah, I don't, I don't know what that, that it's trying to explain because... This... Uh, if you look at that second one, there's uh, he's jumping over the the triangle the and then the uh, temple. That's that's yeah. probably a Jersey barrier <laughs> sort of thing. Yeah, yeah, I'm not I'm not certain about that, but it's worth uh, it's worth looking into for sure. Um, but yeah, and this, I feel like it's just where you end yeah, has to I be. Think, yeah, um, I think that's what it is. The each step of the movement, which does make stairs require a little bit of house ruling. Because, like, isn't that what you're theoretically doing? Is vaulting yeah, every I think, stair? I yeah, think, uh, I think that's... Uh, no, yeah, Paul Anakis addressed. was talking about that, too. Oh, okay. Uh, um, cool, cool, cool. So we've got our jumping. Don't jump. Jumping is great. Bad. What are you talking about? Uh, <laughs> well, you can't, you can't fail, fail it now, it. right? Well, <laughs> so you, you, you couldn't fail it before. It's just you <clears> might die. So if you consider death failure, then, you know, all right, fine. <laughs> but, but now... You know, you can. Uh, like it was. I, I think people not like, not enough people would do it, right? So uh, I forget. Oh right. gosh, I forget which podcast was suggesting this, but like, because you know, all the whole fire team has to declare the same order, right? Fire teams are not a thing in Code One, but yeah. uh, if they were, uh, there's there's the thing where like you've got the one guy with the missile launcher or sniper rifle on the roof. You want to get him off so the fire team can go someplace. So you jump him off the roof, yep. right? And then everybody else jumps four inches mm -hmm. to the side, right? So that sure. would, that would be a. Like, I think jumping is fine. It's, it's a little underutilized. Probably. It also. I think that we might actually see it more because now we'll see more buildings closer together since you can get through. Also gaps. true. So people might be willing yeah, to yeah. jump the gap. More I mean, frequently. this is this is a more impetus to play on Than's rooftop table, which I absolutely love. Oh my goodness. Um, speaking of, yeah, I also really like this example where they showed that, yes, this Fusilier is going to have to spend five orders to get over this box. <laughs> yeah. Um, I love that they use the Fusilier <laughs> for it, too. Like, I know, right? Yeah. This, that poor sucker. Um, but I don't know if this is something that that is in N3. I feel like it's never come up because of how rarely Somebody tries to do that. I climb. Um, yeah, right? But... Um, in this one, it explicitly says that if you declare climb, you stop once you reach a flat surface. That is correct. You can't uh, use your... <clears throat> you can only mo use vertical movement if you're doing a climb. Uh, so as soon as you get to a top of a building or to the bottom of a building, you just stop there. Uh, the change to that, though, is... Or, the, you know, the... the uh, difference to that is when you have climbing plus then in the example it shows in code one you can explicitly use your beginning movement on the ground and then go up yeah interesting it's it's a lot of orders don't climb over buildings but especially ones that have i, I do want to give fan the quick shout out though like this, he has some, this is his rooftop table which is beautiful i mean like it's just it's so much fun and thematic to play on because you know, he's got these like cotton cotton swabs, I guess, or whatever, in between the buildings. So it's like you're in the oh, sky. Yeah, and then he yeah. even like did this really artful thing where you see here, there's like a little bit of cotton like in this Nerf gun thing. So it looks, you know, it's like there's a big tower and oh, then nice. like the clouds are just sort of skating by. It's, oh, it's, it's just, it's so much fun to play on. Uh, I mean, it's extremely punishing, but very fun. All right, I'm sorry. It is a pretty rad table. I'm, he's been doing a lot of yeah, improvements here sure. lately too just look amazing so very very cool so we get into combat this is where modifiers start to happen um i didn't notice 
too many too many major changes and basically in the the generic combat mechanics of the game um, other than of course the the way the different ammunitions now treat criticals um did you guys catch anything particularly exciting around i guess around the basic no, BS I mean, I, i'll be honest i sort of glossed through this right it, it seemed like the uh the ballistic attacks and things like that pretty much worked the same um one thing i do really like is the it wasn't it's something that is goes back to just the the graphic design uh being very clear um mm -hmm. uh, on page 45 when it's talking about template weapons you have that nice picture of basically oh, yes how yeah a that was yes, great thrower works with its conical section and rather than just being kind of a flat yeah, that was thing. fantastic i love i love that yeah no i i concur um that was i was tickled to see that graphic i did notice two two kind of minor things um in this section the first one was uh specifically about shooting into close combat um yeah other, uh, yeah other yeah other than it being not having the ability to hit your own troop but the thing that i saw that was really interesting was it's a negative six per allied troop yeah in the combat so now if you have if you are shooting against my dude and then there's two of your guys in combat with my dude you're I mean, that was 12. the case before yeah was it it was negative six per or it was, it was negative, negative six, six per total? and uh oh and so, like, so like, you, so like the way i like to think of it right you see, you, if you think of it like as a range band graphic right so like let's say your target let's say your panel yeah. and your target number is 18 because you're stupid like you're an aquila guard shooting at something right, right. So, um, you know, if you color, if you color the ranges of numbers, like each band of six is a different dude that you might hit. Right. So that's, that's sure. sort of how it works with multiple guys in combat. Interesting. Okay. I thought that was new, but clearly I am mistaken. But I mean, you know, the only reason I know that is because I was thinking about it, uh, uh, with, um, the crazy civilian rules that we were toying with. Oh, yeah. Sorry. Okay. That Go makes ahead. sense. Um, but the, the the one thing I did find that is that is new is the um, the direct circular template weapons. So again, another bit of future proofing: a direct template weapon that uses the circular template centered around the attacker, as opposed to one of the mm -hmm. teardrop templates. Um, so kind of like with, for the explode rule for a Quang Chi or a, a Gaki. Um, but I'm curious. Or the explode yeah. level X. Yeah, 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 or explode level X. I'm curious if um, I'm curious if it's, if it's going to apply more, like to the uh, wasn't there an old like hedgehog attack or something like that? Hedgehog attack. That was the hedgehog weapon. It was an old the swarm uh, grenade. Perfectly. No, the hedge the hedgehog weapon was uh, similar more to like what the para weapons are now. Oh, okay. XL eighty five eighty five brings up. Uh, uh, how they have assigned saving attributes for the different am ammunition, which is a, a rad change. Oh yeah, this is yeah. They added another, uh, basically another attribute to uh, your ballistic weapon profile. Yeah, uh, that makes it cut down on the ammo types, which is nice. Yeah, exactly. So breaker is just AP against BTS. Um, yeah, which is super super cool. Um, I think that'll. I think that's gonna make things a lot easier. There's I mean, a lot that, of memorization. Is that what it's right? named like, though? Like how? Yeah. So, so if we yeah, go yeah, down okay. to a breaker rifle. I actually didn't let um, you too too close to this. Its ammunition type is AP, and then the saving roll attribute is. Um, oh, is interesting. BTS. So it is. Uh, Flamethrowers, machine guns, marksman rifles. Um, okay, break your copyright. The problem with, with running the stream oh, compositor way. is everything is tiny. Oh, yeah. Oh, I see. Yeah, 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 um, yeah, yeah. So if you look okay, at... nice. Right, so that th makes things way, way easier. Like, there's no more having to explain. So, like, viral is actually also very similar. Viral is double action against Fantastic. BTS. Boom. Yeah. Um, and then later they'll add shock to it, I guess. Uh, no, Concealium Watch got rid of that. I yeah, there's no more shock. O12 got in. Right. The, the War Horse did their duty and uh, reported <laughs> that shit. Go War Horse. 
Ooh, I'm sure I'm sure shock yeah. or something I mean, that's, like that. That's, it such, that's such a huge interaction. Uh, yeah. when you have like NWI stuff running around that it would be crazy to get rid of it. Right, right. Um, so yeah, I really, really enjoy uh, how they do that. Um, double trouble again, similarly. You know, like that's just going to be double action against BTS, right? Yeah. Um, you know, EM isn't covered Ooh. in Code One. Sorry, John. Ooh. Never playing Code One. <laughs> Code One is garbage. Hey, you know, it's it's in some ways we can extrapolate of what it might end up doing because you got you know the, the immobilized. Uh, it might A and be B. both. That would be hilarious That's against uh, pretty fun. against. Oh uh, God! <laughs> Why would you? Because suggest I that? love EM and I want EM to be, be broken again, as it is now. You're you're a bad person. I mean, it'll still isolate, and that's really what does the damage, I feel like, yeah, a lot of the sure. time. Um, yeah, so just a few minor changes there. I am i don't know why I am probably more excited than I should be about the idea of direct circular template weapons. Because um, I mean, it's, it's probably not going to be anything fun or exciting. But I just want like some sort of defensive flesh-out launcher that just like nukes everybody around you. That's all I, I mean, want. I mean, they could change that to how uh, chest mines work. Oh, God. Well, fun. I mean, mines More used to be circular to. or teardrop. Oh, really? I didn't realize yeah, they get, were you either or. you got to or. choose as the deploying, the controlling player back in N2, which was pretty hilarious. Because like, cause now like, you, we have to solve all these weird geometry problems. Like when you're placing a line, you're like, it'd be better if I place it here versus here. Maybe I move behind and then place it. I'll get more dudes at the fire team, whatever, whatever. But, you know... Uh, backing into, you know, throw smoke, walk into a crowd of three guys, poop out of mine, bail, and then giggle when they all die. Right. So since we're talking about mines, one thing that's changed from uh, before is that, uh, or at least is more explicit, uh, if that mine triggers on you and it is outside of your line of sight, uh it is an additional minus three because it is out of line of sight. So you'd be dodging at a minus six to yeah. dodge that out of line. Yeah, this is something that, that I've, I've asked to uh, to IJW just to make sure that there wasn't something I was missing. Um, but we saw those those uh, modifiers to dodge before where one of them was when deployable, one of them was uh, to within zone of control and out of line of fire, and the other one was template out of line of fire. And... I wonder about the possibility of a mine detonating in your rear arc, inflicting a negative nine to dodge. I mean, that's still the same as out of your line of fire. Well, I mean, well, it's a separate out of line of fire, but it's also it also meets the criteria for the first bullet well, point I as think well. We talked about it, right? Because it's not a dude. Well, so that's why I asked the, the you know the the. Rules I mean, I, I'm just saying it because I uh, don't know how to be. There's there's a example uh where it talks about it and uh it is the only the minus six and i don't see how it could be i guess if it was you know if there's smoke or something like that but it's not introduced yeah. in code one that a mine could go up inside of your line of fire but within your front arc well you could you could drop a mine behind someone and then shoot them right yeah yeah which would be a minus yeah. nine is what you're saying right yeah and, and yeah. As, uh, yeah and the example that yeah and as xl 8585 says uh oh, the dodges are more generous but more penalties so i mean that makes sense to me also i mean like it, it just feels slightly better to to do the mine around the corner and then shoot thing because especially if you can do it behind them because right. there's, there's so many scenarios where you do that and they're just like i dodge and then they dodge all the things and you're like Brr. sure sure i actually just really like the idea of like being shot at being shot in your rear arc by like a flamethrower now yeah. is gonna be negative six to dodge. Yeah. And yeah, so like it, it, to me, it actually kind of makes sense a little bit too, right? Like by the time you hear that click, 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 whoosh, like you're, yeah. you're on yeah. fire. <laughs> by the time you're starting to wonder what that might be, um, it's a little bit late. Uh, where you know, if it's a little bit further away, you might you, you have more you know long more time to to react to, to the. Uh, to the flames um so yeah this actually makes me really excited i'm curious how i'm curious how it's going to affect like the the use of war bands if people are just going to be all about them now because of that theoretically you know potential uh negative three or negative six just seems yeah, pretty nasty i mean i guess 
we we all play in a meta where warbands are pretty common so i mean i i get right. it. that's the weird thing about infinity right like the 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 meta you play in really influences a lot of your thought processes and your evaluation of models and skills and stuff um yeah mm -hmm, mm -hmm. pretty pretty interesting like that like i feel like that's 90 percent of the arguments that happen on the internet is that the person a plays in you know their meta person b plays in their meta and it's just like totally different and like the perfect example is like if you play yams the kriza is the correct answer period full stop right but like right, in any right. other scenario in ITS, the you know like the gecko is like all right, well you know it's not as good as shooting, but it it does carry a double assault pistol specialist with it, which is pretty rad. Mhm, mm mhm. Mm and has more wounds. Sure. Right? I mean, it's a three wound plus then you have the pilot right. guy that can hop out. Yeah, yeah. I mean, but I mean, like the argument would be, you know, I, I'm not going to take wounds because I'm throwing five dice at your face all the time. You know, got it. There you go. Yeah, exactly. Just don't take wounds. Okay, good. <laughs> um, cool. So let's get in, let's get into the the I guess limited selection, but the the skills and the abilities that there are in Code One. Um, alphabetically, Alert is going to come up first. And one thing I did notice here, um, they FAQ'd Alert and N three to kind of ignore this first sentence where uh, the trooper cannot have been activated by an ARO or order in the same order to benefit from alert. So this would mean if you are shot in the butt in zone of control and you fail your dodge and you survive it, you do not get I think get you're thinking alert. about warning. And... No, warning is the, yeah, the skill you no, this, is, this is actually one thing that's funny is that alert is now taking the place of warning. Alert as it existed in N3 does not exist. Yeah, the one where you get to declare, you get to declare yeah, everyone so else's warning. To face. Here's warning. Here's warning. Yeah. Three, just so you are aware of what's going on. <laughs> oh, you're right. They've swapped. Yeah, the so names. that's not confusing at all. Yeah. But, um... I mean, it's funny because a lot of people would say, "I'm going to take an alert," and it's like, "Well, yeah. you mean a warning," and uh, vice versa. <laughs> yeah. So I mean, but oh, like, alert alert allows for weird things. Like, sorry, N three alert allows for weird things to happen. Like that one time. Um, where uh, where uh, I was shooting at something like super far away, and then you declared alert so it would get a dodge yeah. change face against my shoot, right? Yeah, which is what I think. Well, it's I for. mean that that and for spinning yeah. around against Van Zandt. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Um, so that old alert is gone. Warning has been replaced by something also called alert, which does what which does what warning did. <laughs> Oh yeah. yeah, that's the other thing. Yeah, doing using alert with yep. uh, helper bots yep. and workhorses, absolutely exile. Um, so, but the the funny thing that I noticed here is that not only does that carry over the wording from previous warning that they then FAQ to be away, they then emphasized the thing that they FAQ'd out. So like now it's really clear you do not get to benefit from now called alert. Um, if you've been activated by the order, which means if your tag gets shot in the butt by a shotgun and fails its dodge, it will continue to get shot in the butt by a shot, shotgun until I mean, it succeeds. That, there, there is a fluff explanation for this, right? So it's like, because, you know, uh, the time of an order is not the same between orders, right? So like order one of a turn may be like 10 seconds worth of stuff. Order two may be like a fraction of a second, right? So you can imagine like if you're in the situation where you're you know getting shotgunned in the butt as a tag, you know the actual wall clock time of the combat is like really compressed and it's just like a guy just like racking the slide and just like shooting the crap out of the tag. Right, just yeah, just yeah. unloading like ah. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. I guess that makes yeah, sense. I don't know. Uh, but as somebody who has lost my avatar to a CSU in the rear arc with a shotgun, um, <laughs> Eric Worth, uh, I I actually much preferred the FAQ change where you get shot in the back with a shotgun, turn around and, and subsidize them. Um, <clears throat> yeah, so that is but that is a pretty important change regardless. Um, can um, you decline your arrow? Uh, yeah. 
Yeah, you can decide right, but does not that, to do anything. Because I mean, I'm just trying to understand this language here. The trooper trooper cannot have been activated by an order or arrow in the same order, right? So yeah. If, so you basically you if you don't do an arrow, you are not activated by an arrow. So you can vol. So the, Sim the avatar similar can... to uh, if there's a mine sitting next to you and somebody shoots at you, you can decide that you don't want to sure. get hit by the mine yeah. and just potentially take the okay so so now you have to make the conscious decision like okay i think i'm gonna pass my dodge i should roll or i'm an avatar and you're shooting at me with like with the pistol so whatever and i will turn around when you shoot me lol 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 hey i think it sure, was sure, a like sure. soccer okay <laughs> yeah, that was the worst like the, the worst the worst just the worst i don't know um Let's see here. Discover. Discover is still a short movement skill slash ARO. I don't really think anything changed there. Oh, this did change. Um, the second sentence. This skill cannot be used against the same target twice in okay. the same order. All right, Nate so Capti. cannot double discover. No more. No more. Right. No bajillion discover rolls. Right. So, so no more being really, really sure that that's not a camo mark. You know, that there's a there's somebody over there. Um and no trying to double discover. That's actually going to be interesting if that carries over for impersonators and if impersonation mm -hmm. is still negative six. That's going to suck. Well, it'd be interesting to see if it retains the two levels of uh, impersonation yeah, as I, well. I'm guessing that impersonation gets simplified down to just what is currently in the, the worst of the two, which I think is the higher number skill. Yeah, it might be imp, imp minus six and imp minus three or something like that. And then it would just be like the... Oh. Or, imp, or just impersonation, that kind of thing, was what I was thinking. Um, you know, some guys would maybe have three. Yeah, 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 six, yeah, yeah, right. Exactly. And then some would just uh, yeah. be a regular. Role. Yeah. So, yes, Exile, since uh, Discover is currently a short movement skill, which means you can declare Discover, Discover, and you can theoretically target two separate targets at the same time. Um that is something that, that currently happens in N N three, and looks like it carries over to uh, N four and Code one. So we've got a whole. This actually, I bet this would look really good printed out, which is funny because this is a digital rulebook where they've got these flowcharts. Yeah, yeah. So these flowcharts carry over between pages, but it's a lovely flowchart, kind of really breaking down, uh, interestingly, a lot of the decision making process around a camouflage. Um, it, you, you should definitely read over this flowchart, John, just because it is it's an interesting one to check out. Like They did a really good job oh, yeah. with that one. The only bummer, again, is that it's spread out over two pages, which doesn't translate well in uh, you a digital just, format. You can just turn on your, uh, uh, your dual page uh, view in your PDF reader. Yeah, I do that a lot. Um, so, so here you go, Dodge, which is something we've been talking about a lot. Um, you do get to move two inches, regardless of it's your active turn or reactive turn, which is freaking rad. And then, of course, the bonuses for what is no longer called kinematica, which is great because you'll no longer have to explain what the word kinematica means. Yeah, um, ask, I mean, is there is there a dodge? <clears throat> there's a dodge distance and then a dodge fizz modifier. Exactly. Plus. Is that how it works now? Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. so I have like dodge plus three and then dodge plus one inch. Which would be like hyperdynamics level one plus. Yeah, we, we, we figured one. it out. It was you, Pete. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, dodge is is glad, just way glad to have you with us, though. It's so much easier to explain. Not having to explain, somebody is like, "Well, you can dodge, or you can change space, or actually, you can also engage right now." Like not having to go through like that discussion, teaching somebody to play this game, like, and then also having to tell them. But if you just happen to be just a little bit outside of that engage range, then yeah. you fail regardless, yeah. even if you <laughs> rolled better than me. Like that's what was. Oh yeah. my god! I'm really just glad like watching changing. the new guys face yeah. when you say those things. They're they're just like, wait, so it's just all bad, and you're like, yeah, it's all bad. <laughs> <laughs> um, something really important here also is that. Um, if you, you know, when you do declare dodge, you are going to be able to move, um, and you get to pre-measure that movement. Yeah. So all movement for all skills, as far as I can tell, works the same. Where you get to pre-measure um, all the possibilities before which you know before you commit to the direction you go. Uh, so even in this example right here, they specifically talk about measuring, um, and then like while measuring, he you know 
He's checking the uh, see how far you can get with two inches after checking the fusilier is, is within range and decides to move into contact, entering the engaged state with the fusilier. Right? So it's like you can you can decide to effectively engage after figuring out um but it's how only, far you it's get only to go. within the short the context of a short skill though, right? <clears throat> yeah, makes sense. Yeah, Cause, cause, exactly. You know, there's, um, there's been a lot of uh, I'm a quarter inch out of range of the stupid, you know, objective after move moving, and it's my last, you know, second to last order right. or something. Um, so idle uh, is still a short movement skill. I was hoping they were going to make it a short movement skill and an ARO, um, oh. just because there was some, yeah there's there's currently you know there's currently some ambiguity where you can get into like a a quantum game state where the model can't legally declare any ARO but must declare an ARO by the rules and you can't declare engage like I mean, I you just, you just what forfeit the ARO it. in that case right yeah um, so far there's nothing in here that says you're considered to perform there, an idol well there, it says that you're you perform an idol versus you declare an idol so yeah, that's no, where definitely... that's that weird ambiguity in the way that it's uh, worded because you have, oh well, I can't declare an idol because it's not yeah. an ARO, but you're not declaring an idol. You declared something else, but you perform an idol because you couldn't right, do right. the thing that you declared. So it's just a, it, it could have been ha had something uh, that just changed it a little bit, so it's not quite as. Yeah, it just it's it's one it of needed things, a like, flowchart. <laughs> <laughs> I can't. I can't think of any reason to not have it be an ARO. Uh, the one reason that I can think of is that in in three, uh, you know, with things that have hidden deployment, you can have a um, <clears throat> basically when a model moves, you could have somebody idle that would then take them out of the the um, hidden deployment state, but maintain their camouflage state. No, but so, so it's a I way don't... of basically you could have people pop up into an area that you're trying to control, uh, right. with after your opponent declares the first movement, or you know the first action. So there's not really a way for them to really react and deal with that new model that just appeared. So yeah, basically, it's a way of, of kind of forcing people to spend Wait, more. I'm, I'm confused. Can you? I can mean, you it's it's not a big one, but. Uh, so, say you have a okay. camouflage token, uh, Nick's okay. like in a zone, right? And you also have a hidden deployment okay. guy in there. Well, you want to take care of that that camouflage marker. So you go up, you, you know, you, you move your model to see it, or you right. have your model seeing it, and you declare okay. discover. They can declare a shoot with that model, and then the other model could idle, or you know, uh, or and come up, oh, and then I you see. have to. I see. Basically, it's just making it something that another model that's already in that zone, whereas normally it wouldn't be in that zone unless you something that you could then I see. start so, shooting. So this at. is to prevent or the uh, taken out of the hidden This is this zone. is to prevent the um, the appearance of like a ninja, right? Makes sense. Yeah, yeah. things like that, um, okay. and then just basically having them soak up more, you know, be more points in a zone uh, suddenly. So it it. Uh, it's only happened to me once, but it was kind of frustrating because there's just these. Sure. Can you can you really delay still against camel tokens and stuff? That's still in there, right? Okay. Then... Uh, yeah. Yeah, but nobody's instance the camel token would be the right. Yeah, yeah. The active player so the act Um, yeah. No, so they still have delay in here, and they didn't they didn't define delay as a skill. They just defined it as something you can do against camouflage. So that I think there's going to still be a little bit of. Confusion. I mean, it was, it was never a skill, right? Um, it, it wasn't. But I was kind of hoping that they were oh, going to. Oh, I see. To, but but then, but it, then, like, make it something that's. But very then, explicit. but then you'd have to double declare, right? You have, have to, to like, you'd have to declare delay as a as a skill, and then somehow like swap in a real skill later, right? Which is which yeah. is a little odd. But it's 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 the only thing in the game that you declare that isn't something that isn't something that you're declaring, right? Yeah. Okay. Fair enough. Right. Um, so one well, thing that I really like you don't huh? declare it though. You just say you're delaying your ARO. <laughs> <laughs> you yeah. state it. Yeah. You, the enemy can delay declaring yeah. their ARO. <laughs> right. Um, 
So something else I really liked is their just the plate or place yes, deployable. This cell. is huge. Uh, I think. I think it, yeah, it's well, it's massive for coordinated orders. Are they a thing um, in Code One? You're no longer. Okay. They are not. No, there's no command tokens. But my, I think that this is going to mm-hmm. carry over. Yeah. Um, I think this is one of those rules. But this is just the new simplified yeah. version, kind of like Dodge. I think N4 Dodge will be this Dodge. Um, I hope so. And. Yeah, it's going to be massive for, you know, theoretically for coordinated orders where now you can have a coordinated order with two zeros, one of them dropping an e-mauler and the other one dropping a repeater. Exactly. At the same time, or John. I could have a scout drop an e-mauler and the like... chasseur drop a mine and then both of them can recamo and keep moving. Just to make my life complete <laughs> hell. <laughs> I'm, I am I'm so not looking forward to that, but it's so much easier than having to explain to somebody that, you know, first you need to use the skill called yep. anti-personnel mine. To deploy yep. your anti-personnel mine. This is like nope, just so much easier. Make it all one skill. It does the same. Yeah, and and now thing. you can uh, you would be able uh, to recamo to guy and uh, camo guy because now it's just mimetism. Yeah, yeah right. Camouflage. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. No, that's that's huge. Actually, yeah, that that's massive really too. And I think that I think that act, that actually probably comes from a situation where like. Um, other than just like a side effect of the simplification of the rules, but also um, it's like a common mistake that a lot of right. people were doing anyways. So just 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 make it into the game. Now there's no ambiguity. People won't mess it up. Easy. So speaking of ambiguity, <laughs> martial arts. I love the new martial arts table. Um, it's it is progressively better every. Well, it's, it's of course it's not over here in the close combat section. Um, it is you know every level of martial Page arts seventy one. Okay, who's <laughs> the level of martial arts before it, which is just so much smarter. So if you have level four, you're using level four all the time. You're never using level one or level two. In fact, uh, you don't have it. But the oh, that's right. You yeah. don't even have it. You don't have so the, there's the there's no choice. You just do the uh-huh. thing. Right, but the the thing that is a little a little frustrating is this up here called damage mod. So going back to talking about wonderful mm-hmm. ambiguities, damage mod, or as it is, ref- yeah, is not a modifier to the damage of the attack. It is a modifier to the physique of the attacker. Um, I really hope they change that title. And that's relevant for things like pistols and monofilament yep, and close combat yep. weapons that have a set value. Yep. Yeah, it's a little... Mm, yeah, make it, just make it yeah. his mod instead. Yeah, exactly. Because if, when you go to, you know, what it describes the header right here, it's a mod to the fizz value of the user to determine the damage of successful CC attack. Um, yeah. So if you are, you know, if you're martial arts level four, you're not swinging a damage 15 monofilament weapon. Sorry, John. I mean... Um, <laughs> If, if it was possible, I would do it. <laughs> right. You're you're still stuck with your measly, you know, uh, damage twelve yeah. monofilament, which weapon. is a which is uh, basically a pool noodle but, against anything with total immunity. Right. Um, <laughs> four. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, we'll see what yep. total happens to total immunity. Uh, I mean, it's not in code, right, right. so you don't need to worry about it. <laughs> right, exactly. It doesn't matter right now. Take advantage of it all you can, John. Well, I mean, uh, Ariadna's not in Code One yet. So, you you better believe that they're gonna have like dogs and stuff in in, in Ariadna when they show up. Yeah, I'm looking forward to. Uh, I mean, it's it's funny because it's like it's already a year from now. Like this set isn't even in stores yet. Like I've already assembled all of mine. I'm, I'm getting more. Like I'm ready to go, and I'm already looking forward to the next set that comes out to add two more factions. Yeah, it's gonna <laughs> be a good time. Uh, yeah, but uh, so camouflage is going to be here. The camouflage pretty much works exactly as you'd expect. The only difference is there's no more um, camouflage itself does not contain a viz modifier for discovery. That's the mimetism value of the trooper that is being camouflaged, right? Like that's it. It's pretty mm-hmm. pretty straightforward. Uh, yeah, it's nothing nothing too exciting. Cancels more or less the exact same way as before. Um, 
not too exciting, but I do really like the um, the different types of mimetism and the separating it from mimetism so that you can you know, get fancy. Um, climbing Plus works like it did before. You know, you can walk up walls. Um, still no cover. Trying right? to think if there's anything. Yeah. Yep, still no cover. Um, and you can't deploy on vertical surfaces during the deployment. Oh, that's stage. huge. Oh, because because that. deploying that's a cyclone good. on the side of a building was awesome. <laughs> yeah. Well, and I've done it. I think I did it to you with my Cataran, or did I do it to I'm Isaac? Sure I've had it done to me, if not by you, by PJ. So. <laughs> One of us was definitely uh, at fault to that. I'm not bitter. Um, right. So combat jump doesn't scatter. Right, if you fail the fizz roll, you just go in your deployment zone. That's so much better. Um, like it's it it feels so bad when you like drop in something expensive like a Hellcat, right? And then it deviates like in front of a link team, and you're and like, like, well, all right, I guess that was, you know, bah, 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 twenty-five bah, bah, to thirty points well spent. It is. And I'm wondering if the Hellcat is just going to end up with like combat jump plus three. Yeah, that would be fine. Right. Right. Just like. And, and maybe Yan Yan will have combat yeah, jump minus perfect. three, right? Like just roll it all up, get rid of the you know. I, it, even though it's amazing how cats be able to deploy anywhere, anywhere in the deployment zone, like get rid of the edge cases. <clears throat> um, I mean, it, it. So I mean, you say that it's amazing, but as as a as a nomad, like I you know I haven't been a nomad player in in months, but as a nomad player for a very long time before that, um, the the amount of times it's relevant is super low. Like it, it sure. never really felt like a, a like, a, like a, a skill that I cared about, and if it turns into just like plus three fizz, that would be amazing, because I mean, yeah, that's actually what I thought it was. When yeah, because I, I mean, I mean, it's just it's just really nice. Mm. Uh, so uh. Eric asks if um, do you know if uh, there's going to be a or, or you know what do we think about there being a competitive scene for Code One? Uh, and I mean, the, the the answer is that there 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 should be one. I mean, that's that's Bastia's hope. Uh, listening to I, was it White Noise that he was on, or Ooh, is he the White Noise or Maya Cast? Um, he was on one of them, and uh, he was like, "Yeah, no, I absolutely want there to be like a, a competitive tournament scene for this." Um, and uh, you know, I think I think the the question that the host had for him then was like, "Oh, what happens to ITS?" Like, is you have different two different scores, and he's like, I don't know. It's like so many things going on right now. So yeah, right. Figure but, it out. Um, All right. I guess. I mean, like, I, I think can it's... totally see running like a, a one day five round, fifteen point. Uh, I don't. I don't know if it's going to be like that kind of time compression. I mean, I, I think it might be more realistic to say that we'll actually finish three rounds now. Oh, I don't say that. Well, the other thing too is that um, it, it'll be really good for like those league type of you know slow grow leagues and things like that because uh, it's a little bit easier to digest the rules and even just like the basic interactions. Um, True, I, I think it's, it's going to be great for like yeah. Yeah, I mean the, the one the one thing that I, I want to avoid though is like you know we sort of split the play group into like you know the. Um, the newer players than like the big dogs or something like that, right? I mean, I guess I more see it, see it as a replacement for yeah, that's um, true, Pete. for recon. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I absolutely see it as a good as an excellent teaching tool, um, right? As like a recon thing. And I think the yeah. thing is too is you also with league stuff when it, even if it's just an escalation, you can still fit you know like an impersonator or a you know to hidden deployment guy with a missile launcher. And your opponent is uh, suddenly dumbfounded when you do that because they don't know the game well sure. enough. So this takes out a lot of those rules. So you're kind of already muzzled if you feel like you're a big dog. Uh, well, no, no, I, I just, right. I just mean like you know, like uh, uh, I, I could, I could see somebody coming in, right? I won't name names, but I, I can definitely have somebody yeah. in mind who would come in and be like, oh, like I, I can't play N four. Right, because I, I'm having trouble even with Code One, right? And I'll just, I'll just, I'll just never, mm -hmm. I'll never be able to like that's a game that I'll never touch, even though like the Delta will be pretty, sure. pretty small after you have a couple of games of Code One, Code One in. That's that's my fear. Maybe, maybe it's because, uh, you know, I, I uh, 
I have concerns about that. Yeah. Personal but, experience. Um, so <laughs> I, I don't know. I mean, I, I think it will be uh, it'd be interesting. I'm it, it's it is a lot of work to run tournaments and stuff. Uh, so so splitting our mm -hmm. attention as tos. Um, I mean, you know, I gotta be honest. It'll be a lot of a lot of extra work. Uh, like I I uh, see I. I think of it as just a different ITS extra. Yeah, okay. All right. Yeah, I, I think it depends on how well it's integrated. Right, like, uh, to me, it's just like... Tournament system or something. Yeah, is this a Code 1 tournament or is this a, you know, an N3, N4 tournament? Like, it, to me, it's no different than saying it's a limited insertion, insertion tournament or it's a 200-point tournament or, you know, like, I guess I feel like I'm so used to throwing so many variables at the people we play with anyways... They're like, this is just one more lever sure, for me to pull. Sure. And like... I mean, but there's, there's also the, the um, for the near term, the availability of models, right? Because there, there are some people, right? especially yeah. now, who have lost their jobs or, you know, are under additional financial hardship and they can't really justify splurging on Kallstrom. And they only play, you know... Yeah, or they don't play... Yeah, they only play Ariadna, right? Yeah, that's, that's so, totally valid. Um, but before we go too far off on this, because I actually do want to bring that up uh, towards the end, it was the one question we had in the in the uh, yeah, sure, question. Rules, yeah, that's true. Uh, yeah, let's 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 get a little bit more back towards the uh, towards the skills themselves that we're talking about. Um, something I really noticed different about Doctor is that Doctor is the same, but medicates mm -hmm. are totally different. Uh, I mean, they're just totally med injectors. They don't suffer the negative. Yeah, well, yeah, exactly. They're med injectors now, right? So it's a straight phase roll. It's not phase minus three. Um, that's that's big. That makes paramedics not just like the, I have an extra point. I guess I'll upgrade one FO to a paramedic in case that, you know, in case that uh, that classified mm -hmm. card comes up. Like, it actually makes paramedics. Or I need well to make a, a beeline for a objective. <laughs> right? And, yeah, right, exactly. And I think that, you know, it, it, to me... Um, you know, we, we have no idea what the points are going to look like in N4, but like that makes the paramedic worth the more points than the Ford Observer. Yeah, for sure. I mean, Jordan will be happy. Yeah. Oh my god, well yeah, like just thinking about playing um, playing Morats or playing yeah. uh, Ariadna, you know, armies that have natively and higher access to a ton ways. of paramedics. Like that makes Yeah, but it also exactly gives you some extra paramedic. value for those high physique uh, heavy infantry as well. You know, like a Hakau yeah. is, is 14 versus, uh, or, you know, like the, I think the Zhu Yang is only 12, but then you have the uh, Shang-Chi. What's, uh, what's the fizz let's, of an let's orc? Let's find out. Like, is the, is the orc I think they're better 14. off? So, so the orc is better off being hit by the Fusilier paramedic than by the, uh, <laughs> by the trauma doctor. <laughs> well, yeah. that's what's kind of nice about, that? about those trauma doctors is that they're, they have the medicate as well. Yeah, right. Sure, so, sure. so it's it's so now your doctor is basically just choosing whichever one is better. So oh. if you're going to heal an orc, you use your medicate. Um, if you're, you know, using a few, doing it with the fusilier, you might want to use your whip because you're yeah, too exactly. higher. I definitely like the orc being like, you know, if you could please not doctor me, just give, yeah, me, give, the, me, the give me the juice. The, the, like, the suit knows what I, to do. You don't. Yeah, yeah, I'd, I'd much prefer. And that too, you are going to waste less orders yeah. shooting the medikit. Um, yeah. At the flip side, you might actually end up wasting more orders because people will attempt to medikit more initially. frequently. At least initially. Yeah, at least initially. <laughs> we'll see. We'll see how it comes out in the wash. I think it's going to be much like doctoring now, where it's like, unless that troop is really worthwhile, it's probably not. I mean, worth but the everybody orders. has their own opinion on this, right? right? Like, so I've I've seen a lot it's of people also, like. Um, like playing against you or Ruben, right? Like if I leave a Q drone up, that's like ooh, sorry. If I shoot mm -hmm. a Q drone and don't shoot it off the table, it's it's coming back up, right? So, true, true. You know, but but I guess I guess like that falls into you know, worth it, right? Um, something also kind of tangentially related to both engineer and doctor uh, in Code One is with no command tokens there's no re-rolling failed attempts oh uh, right yeah yeah, yeah. there's right, also like, no you you no longer have that extra wound of unconsciousness for your remotes anymore yeah there's no rem presence so 
So don't mess That's it up. That's pretty big too, right? Um, now, if I, you know, like <laughs> if I shoot your remote, then it, like re re remotes, like part of the balancing act was they were, they were better because, you know, you could leave a, like a, like a Q drone up and you'd really have to spend a lot of order shooting at it. To get rid yeah. Of it. But now, you know, yeah, to really eliminate it. Yeah, I'm, I'm curious how, how that's going to play out. Like, is, is REM presence going to be something that sticks around? Um, is tag pilots going to be something that sticks around? Right. All, there's a lot of a lot of questions around there. Um, yeah, I mean, at the moment, even remotes are dodging the same and can go prone. So it'll be yeah. interesting to see how things I'm, might change or might just stay as they are. I would. Um, because, I mean, I feel like that's a fairly big difference if it doesn't change. Yeah, that, that would be a really weird yeah, I'm curious. thing to do I to think... people, too. I mean, like, I know, well, I guess Dakinis are in 012, right? Oh, but they're not They're not in Code 1. Right? Yeah. No. So, true, true. I guess they're... Maybe they'll make the distinction somehow between the more humanoid remotes and yeah. the... Uh... <laughs> And uh, the you know the four legged yeah because can you imagine ones. like a player playing a bunch of code one and then coming in and being like okay well my my dakini or you know my my son bay or whatever is going to go prone and then an n4 player would be like nope can't do that right <laughs> you'd be <laughs> no. like wait what uh, that would yeah. be a really bizarre a bizarre uh you know cognitive dissonance to have to like walk into right right so so we'll see how, we'll see how that shakes out um for deployment is, I mean, it's pretty self-explanatory. They changed it, but they just changed it by telling you how many inches in the skill. Um, they don't have over infiltration, so you can only, infiltrating is just deploying up to the midway line. Um, still have the lieutenant special order, although the lieutenant seems there's no loss of lieutenant, so people are going to be taking the uh, shooty guys. Yeah, you know, the big hitting lieutenant. Sure. There are some there are some scenarios where you get points for the lieutenant, like annihilation sure. and decapitation. Um, but most of the time, you'd be like, "I'm over here, guys!" Pow, 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 pow. Yeah, the only downside is that you don't have that lieutenant order anymore. If you you know if that unit gets killed, is there no nominating a new lieutenant either? I don't think so. Oh, I didn't yeah. even bother to look that up. I, I just mean, like. Assumed... Huh. I mean, just like think about how disgusting that makes this gamma. <laughs> Right. <laughs> oh my God. Yeah. Like, I, sure. I'll just like wander or him around and agent. punch people in the face with him until, until they're really sad. And if I lose them, oh well, no big deal. Right. So that's actually kind of neat. It becomes a um, a resource you can lose. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I I wonder if they'll keep that. Because uh, I mean, they've continuously made loss of lieutenant like less poopy throughout the whole uh, incarnation of Infinity. Yeah. I... I hope they don't. I want lots of I do I too. like lots of lieutenant. Because I mean like it's really not all that bad. Um so it's not in the, I it's it's something to, to learn yes. around. Pete's saying that no no loss of lieutenants and no nomination process. Gross. Well that's cool. That's cool. Yeah, it, probably it just a code one. It also it also um, feels less because I mean like you know that, that would be a pretty you know big feel bad moment where uh, like you, you send your lieutenant out and like especially this gamma as an example right and it gets like hit by a missile or something right. and then you're like well your toy's gone and your next turn is gonna suck yep yep um so let's see what else mimetism is self-explanatory non-hackable works the same so parachutist this is big um so parachutist is now what airborne infiltration was so your troops with the parachutist skill aren't picking where they're going before the game. They get to pick during the... Uh, I, I mentioned it a little bit earlier, Peter, but we can go back and, and talk a little about it. But basically, the, the great thing about the new martial arts start, or one of the great things, is that it's constantly progressive. Um, so you're never using lower skills. You can't even use lower skills. Um, but the chart itself is really very different. So it makes it so the two... The two, uh, I guess, levels that really matter are going to be level two yeah. and level five. Um, <clears throat> I feel like level two, the, the jump between level two and level four is pretty nice. Like one, two, I feel like three, it doesn't need to be there. But the jump between, you know, just plus one damage to right. plus three and with four is, is, I feel like that's fairly significant. It's true, and depending right. on the weapon you have. Like Yojimbo, right, is, MA, like, assuming Yojimbo is still MA4, right? 
That's a pretty big deal. Right. Because then he's like smacking you in the face on 17. Yeah, like looking at. Yeah, or how they do. Uh, he's what do you what do you mean by the profile? Doing the same thing. Plus one damage on HI. I'm not sure what you mean, Peter. I don't know. I'm guessing he's saying you know if you have a, a heavy infantry that has uh, MA, it's you know it's based on the. Oh the, sure the, sure the, yeah so you you punch harder because you have more now. Yeah, right? because before you know you didn't have the plus the damages except for one and two. Uh, and then it was all just bonuses. And then, yeah, level five where you're hitting at plus three, negative three for the enemy, plus three damage right. and an extra burst. Um, that that hurts. You know, that's gonna <laughs> that's gonna leave a dent. Um, so let's see here. Let's get back down here. Yeah, mimetism talked about. Talked about. Yeah. Um, non-hackable. Non-hackable works expected. Yes. Yeah, so the parachutist being able to come in on any table edge. Like, as an Ariadna player, I oh hope, God, I hope, yeah, I hope, I too. hope that this carries through. That's going to be yeah, so good. Now, 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 like, in vanilla, I can take a Paracommando, an Airborne Ranger, Spetsnaz, and Van Zant and have them come in on every possible table edge. Yeah. And yeah. he also uh, won't have to forget about it, too. Like, that's, I feel like, <laughs> what most often yeah. happens. Yeah. Especially like you know, sometimes you'd be playing players and they'd forget about it. You have to remind them, and this just yeah. makes it a whole I mean, it's lot just, oh, yeah, it's simpler. So much stronger right. too. Well, then, God, just like the number of games I've played where I'm like desperately trying to get smoke coverage on a table edge so that I can walk up, <laughs> like, like I had to pick in deployment before the other person was deployed, and then like sure enough, they just like cram that side full of stuff. And I'm like, well, I have to bring this thing on before the you know before the end of the game. So I spend like five orders getting smoke on there, failing, walk onto the board edge and get killed. Like, well, whew, I mean, that felt fun. The, I the real answer is you rangers. just feed five airborne rangers through until one of them makes it. <laughs> That's yeah, what has worked before. before. <laughs> it was. It was. <laughs> that was amazing. Yeah. Uh, I was like, you know, there's a crazy claw on there, right? You're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's fine. <laughs> yeah. Oh, your your airborne ranger is dead. It's cool, okay. Huh? New order. I walk on another airborne ranger. I was like, "Oh no!" I mean, and they're not cheap to throw no, into the bus not. like that, you know. Like, but but sending sending in like the dirt cheap or the the comparatively cheap one to clear the crazy koala so the Molotov one could come I think on you and threw have fun. Three like three airborne rangers through that gap. Yeah, the I last did. one. I did. Like basically, like you you walked one on, it died to the crazy quail. You walked another one on, it died to my gecko's return fire. You walked another one on, and then killed my gecko. <laughs> yep, yep. Worth yeah, it. Yeah, in that case, it was because I think <laughs> we were playing some tag mission. I think we were too. Um, so peripheral is just the the change for G servant. Um, I read through it pretty quickly because it was really long and I didn't want to read every single word. It more or less seemed the same. Um, if there are any pretty major changes, then I'd love to hear them, but it generally seemed to do what, what peripheral currently does. Um, they also made sure it's really clear that, yep, if you have a peripheral getting the close combat with you, you're getting the extra you're getting the extra uh, burst and all that. Um, Protheon changed. Oh, sorry, go ahead, Obi. I was going to say the the one thing with moving a two mo having two models in close combat changed somewhat. Um, oh, that's right. In the reactive turn, because if you have if you're in the reactive turn and you you have two models in base to base with the opponent, uh, you only get you you get the burst bonus, but both of them aren't attacking anymore. Because it used to yeah. be that if you got two guys in in the reactive, one guy just got to punch your uh, your opponent while he de tried sure. to deal with the other one yeah so that that is a big a big difference is that it's basically adding an extra burst to the face-to-face -face on whoever's going face-to-face -face with them yeah. um I mean, again yeah. this is like a, a pretty but, rare edge case so it seems fine and it's a nice, nice yeah. solution yeah yeah um but protheon change is huge um and it's huge because they just they've streamlined what it does all it really does is for every wound you inflict in CC, you get a wound back. I mean, that was, um, that was true before, That's different right? because... No, because before, um, it changed your damage to go against right. their BTS. 
and you had to use it unarmed. Uh, okay. So now, so now she skin can tap you with her explosive close combat weapon and thrux and suck three wounds out of you. Although it's capped to her two. attack. Yeah, cause she only had she only yeah. has DA in this. Oh, she only has DA in this. Still, uh, so gross. But yeah, so so it used to be that was my my big probably one of my biggest complaints. Um, other than the hackable thing about boarding action she skin is that it's like great she upgrades her close combat weapon and so I guess you're not using Protheon yeah yeah having it just be uh, an additional skill rather than a whole nother chart and just a whole nother way yeah. it reacts is yeah I assume the same thing happen for guard yeah I'm wondering is how guard is in here um uh, the alpha is not. No, no okay. he's not. My, my completely based on absolutely no factual information about guard is that you're just going to count as that being um, an extra model. So it's basically yeah, a plus that makes numbers. no sense. Mm -hmm. So, let's see here. Regeneration. So regeneration is cool. They have got rid of the auto med kit, or at least they seem to have, and just roll everything up into regen. They were basically um, the same anyway. I feel like. And Yep, but the the crazy thing here is that it happens at a totally different time during the game. Um, so instead of being a skill that you activate it with, it happens during the states phase of your turn. So the turn where you're managing phase, states. Um, so it's essentially happening for mm, free. That's super gross, actually. But it also means that it also means that like if you're running a Sogra around and your Sogra eats a bad arrow and goes unconscious, you don't get to then start shoving orders into him to get him back up. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the the times where I was doing that is pretty rare, and but it's it's for, this for, feels much better to me. I, I feel like I, I would appreciate this a lot more because uh, it really makes my opponent... I feel like this makes my opponent more sad. Yeah, no, it's... It, yeah, coming up without spending yeah. any orders and c combining that with the... Um, I believe just when, when you cancel the unconscious state, you also cancel your prone state. Yeah, that yeah. I don't like. I don't like it either, but if you have a, I don't know, um, something like a Noctifer up on a rooftop regenerating and standing back up into position. I mean, like... if it was optional, I'd be on board, <laughs> right? That's, that's the right. key, if it's optional. The I... other fun thing with that, though, with uh, I think I'm trying to find it, but I believe you both check for states. Um, oh, in the so states phase, so future? you could potentially come up on you know on your opponent's order. They could knock you down again, and then you could come up on your own own turn again. I'm trying to look that up right now, um, but I I think when oh, there is yeah, the states look at that. phase, I've got, I've got it up right here. So yeah, the third phase of the player turn. Once the active player runs out of orders mm. or decides not to use the remaining ones, both players will carry out any checks for those states or skills that require rad. it. Okay, so e it's at the e end of the... Uh, basically, the, before the oh. end of the turn. I was thinking it's it was at the Before the, the end of the turn. Beginning. So it's not at the beginning yeah. of the turn. Yeah. Oh, that's... That's nasty. So that means that if, you're, if you shoot down one of my guys, it will come up before my turn starts, potentially. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it'll happen during your stage. And that phase. means that you get the orders for it if it does, which is wow. really nice. I wonder how I wonder how that's going to affect Loss of Lieutenant. I mean, he's not unconscious at your, the start of your turn. Yeah, right. And that's ex <laughs> and that's exactly it. Is that getting up from regen and from doctors, etc., um, isn't you know that unit's not activated right so they're not the ones triggering any it's still, arrows it still feels which was bad one of the things that made you not want to use it <laughs> i oh i generally agree with you john it yeah. should be optional um oh the yeah. standing up yeah <laughs> standing up. no i mean i i think the one thing with regeneration before though is so often you would that guy would be out in the open mm -hmm. uh Right. Or, you know, somewhere where an opponent is seeing it and you wouldn't want to spend orders when you're just getting shot trying to stand back up. Something else worth noting, and this is different than auto med kit, and it might have been how regen works before. I've never had a troop with a regen that I've used that I recall, um, is that you don't have to be unconscious to use it. 
That's so, great. That was the big thing about Regen over the, uh, and the other big thing was that it used to give you shock immune, but now shock uh, doesn't exist. So. Yeah, that's right. There is no shock in, in code one, but um, if theoretically a right. Sograt works its way into code one, or if this is the, uh, the rule carries over to code four, that could be pretty Or bad. you might just die. Or you might just die. Yeah, <laughs> which, that. which is pretty funny. <laughs> Learn, learn to be physical. I get, well, I mean, I can already, I can already uh, he, you know, hear, you know, hear this. Guy, that's like, the thing that's like, I, I can see it in my head already. We're playing a game. You're playing more ants. You're a out. You're like, all right, I'm gonna roll for my state's phase regen. You roll, you roll like a twenty, and then you just do. Ah! Right. Yeah, it's gonna. It's happen. gonna happen. Um, so rem driver is interesting. This to me seems like what they actually intended Cyber Ghost to do. Um, and what I'm kind of suspecting that they will. It will change to do an M4. But basically, LZ? when you deploy. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, sure. Um, to too. But when you deploy. Uh, when you deploy a REM driver, you put a token onto another remote that you've already got deployed on the table. And whichever modifiers are associated in the brackets with the REM driver token get applied to that remote. Yeah. And the, the nice thing about this, um, talking with. Uh, Joel Traveler about this, and uh, it's there's no defined state in that. Yeah, like it, it, there's no defined bonus in it, so it could really be anything. So there's a lot of things that they could Does potentially do. Does anything have REM driver now? Okay, not currently. Not in the code line. Interesting. Just like the just like the the circular template, direct template weapon. It's going to yeah. be. Awesome. And in the I mean, my, yeah. Uh, Absaras right now are kind of meh to me. So. Yeah. This sounds. Yeah. Sounds pretty cool. Right. Um, so let's see here. So the the Shasvasti embryo, which is you know the the spawn embryo now called something different, um, more or less does the same thing, worded in a way that's a little bit confusing sometimes. With especially that last sentence, the trooper cannot be removed from the game table. Um, even though under the dead state, it gives you instructions on how to remove the trooper, even if they have the Shazvas, the embryo rule. Um, so it just basically does the same yeah. thing they did before. They're, and they basically count, and actually they, they made it a little bit cleaner and saying that they count as a non-null when computing victory points. Um, so that makes that a little bit easier. Specialist operative essentially does the same thing just cleaned up the wording a little bit. You basically just count as a specialist, even right. if you don't fulfill whatever defines a specialist there. Um, surprise attack is both for CC, BS, hacking, and comms. So it's no longer like negative three at range with negative mm -hmm. six and CC. Because you're using surprise shot instead of surprise attack. Like it's all just rolled into one with whatever modifiers in the brackets. Pretty, again, straightforward. Uh, nothing surprising. We talked about super jump. Um, Total reaction does exactly what it did before. They do make it really clear that you only get to choose one trooper activated mm -hmm. by the order mm -hmm. as the target, which is kind of funny to even include in code one because there's no way. Oh, I guess, I guess for servants, never mind or peripherals. Um, so yeah, so they just clean that up, um, make it really clear. Um, so hacking in code one <laughs> exists, <laughs> but it's minimal. That's probably fine. <laughs> right? uh, yeah, yeah, it's, yeah. it's funny. They don't have an under hacking device, but it's just, um, actually let's get to that in a minute. Cause spotlight is a good conversation okay. to have. Um, you have MSV one and two work as they did before MSV three also again works as it did before, uh, including the ignoring, um, surprise attack mods if they're in line of fire. Um, nano screen again is just you're in cover from all angles, nothing too exciting. All right, so scenery structures. Okay, so we get into scenarios. Let's talk about hacking. Um, let's give the scenarios for now. Um, I'm gonna take that last. So, for hacking, there's only two programs. Where did it go? Oh my goodness, really? <laughs> Should have had bookmarks, huh? Um, so yeah, if you have a hacking device, program one is Carbonite, program two is Spotlight. Sure. Um, Carbonite, Carbonite um, does a lot of 
kind of what it did before, right? So it's a it's gonna be a straight whip roll. There's no mm. modifiers. Damage thirteen, double action against BTS. Um, if they fail, they enter immobilized B. So immobilized changed pretty drastically. Um, immobilized A is against your physique. Immobilized B is against your BTS. Okay, so you can now dodge out of glue and reset out of um, the other immobilized, immobilized B. So the uh, the dodge out of glue, it's basically just a fizz check at fizz minus six. It, it's declaring the dodge skill. Um, so you'll have to win the face-to-face roll if somebody shoots you as well. Um, and then if you get immobilized from here, you can reset at negative three as usual. Um, so Carbonite didn't really change a whole lot, but Spotlight, man, Spotlight is, yeah. is a whole ARO as well. World. Uh, yeah. It's an ARO. This is, which is, this is what I've been wanting forever. Right? It's not... Um, there's no negative penalty for doing it. And the so and it puts the person in the targeted right. state, right? Um, targeted uh, persists now until they've either been repaired by a um, repaired mm-hmm. by an engineer. Where is it? Oh, it's directly below it, derp. Okay, Spotlight, so yeah. <laughs> and where's it targeted? Uh, it's late. Um, okay, so targeted is still plus three mod for BS no. attack. Or they, or they um, reset or, their Wi Fi at minus three. Exactly. Um, but they are negative three for whip rolls for resets. So if you spotlight them first and then hack them with something else, they're negative three against that. Well, that's uh-huh. a, the really funny thing is, is they must apply a minus three whip to their reset rolls. So if you target them first and then carbon uh, carbon item to get out of that immobilized B state, they're at a minus six whip. Yeah. So I feel like there's a little bit more stacking of those type of negative mods uh, than there is That's fun. currently. Yeah, and well, and now targeted works against uh, hacking and comms attacks. Success. Right. So if you if you target me. All my other hackers are going to be all the other. Uh, that was that was true before, hack. actually. Uh, it used to work yeah. that way. Yeah. Did it? Yeah. Oh. The main problem was that it used to go away. Now it doesn't. You need. I, I got excited because I thought you were saying it would work against you know, jammers. Whip roll. Oh, it does work against jammers. Gross. Please no. Jammers. I know. I know. This, I know. So that, that was why I got excited. But, yeah. Oh. Well, the the one oh. thing that's nice is with an ARO at spotlight, you could potentially. Be, do a face-to-face spotlighting them. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, and the other thing that is nice is... Um, so this is one thing that I'm, I'm not 100% sure on, but so the cancellation says that the affected trooper successfully passes a normal or face-to-face reset roll applying a minus three whip mm-hmm. mod. Does yeah. that stack on top of that troopers in the state must apply a minus three mod to their reset rolls? Or is that supposed to include that? Oh, interesting. So is it the negative six off the bat, or is it negative three? I it's assume they mean three. they're referring yeah. to the negative Otherwise, three. Otherwise, that's really prohibitive. Yeah, it, that seems more yeah. reasonable. <laughs> don't don't <laughs> don't go crazy over. Yeah. Um, no, but this is this is huge. I mean, like, <clears throat> I have been clamoring for this for a while, and uh, now I mean, this alone makes assault hacking devices like ten times better. It really does. Um, Do yeah, assault I, like hacking uh, or does assault hacking yes. devices have spotlight? Yes. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, that's right. Like that change to hack. Yeah. In the spotlight is everything yeah, I ever it's wanted. It's massive. Oh, I'm so happy. I'm like, like now, now this is this is huge incentive to go back and play No Man's again. I mean, I don't play hackers, and I was like, this yeah. is amazing. <laughs> this is amazing. I mean, Why does everybody able to spotlight? target somebody and then they can't re? You know, they they're just stuck with a mm-hmm. plus three against them unless they're spending orders to get rid of it. Like right. that, that can tie some people down or make them at a pretty yeah, big and it's not that big of a deal either, right? Because I mean, you know, basically it's like you catch them out of cover, right? So yeah, so yeah, yeah. Which I, I mean, if you're depends on what they were going after. 
Like if you can catch them while they're trying to go, you know, find somebody that's, you know, a little bit stronger or even just has a, a high powered right. weapon. But I mean, just just imagine the nightmare that will ha- that will happen now when you have like a repeater and you walk into a repeater and there's an assault hacker and a killer hacker on the other end. Of it. Right. <laughs> right. That sounds that glorious. That sounds terrible. Um. So moving on to the the game states, one thing I really like they did here is that they they defined the states. Kind of the same way to define the skills in the game, um, with the effects cancellation and activation, like it's just cleaned up. Nothing, everything in here seems to do more or less what it did before, but it's just um, yeah. they really, yeah, it's really been streamlined. Get rid of a lot of the ambiguity. Normal state is a thing that exists. I mean, you have to right. have a state so, to be normally. So sure. Yeah. Exactly. Um, but it's just nice that you used for that. Sorry, what took you for that? <laughs> Shut up, <Bobby>. <laughs> <laughs> that's, the, that's the token you used for it. Um, uh, one thing that's nice is disconnected is now a null mm. state. Oh, uh, that's good. I had that pointed out to me, and I was like, that's so that's nice. right. Have they little... fixed the um, the what happens when I I just I guess it's not a thing. You can't isolate stuff in Code One. I guess we'll find out when N four. But no. Oh yeah, like isolating a, yeah, uh, yeah. peripherals. That works. Yeah. Not a problem in Code One. Hey, you know what? It's it's not a problem in the rules if you just don't yeah, have the yeah, rules exactly. for it. <laughs> um. So let's see here. Yeah, that's almost the same. The states are nice and fun and, and cleaned up. Um. And then we get to the weapons. We talked a little bit about that, how the weapon is now defined with the range band, the damage, the burst, the ammo, and then the saving attribute. Um, so this cleans, I think this just cleans things up so much, so nicely. Um, the pair of CCW is interesting too. So it's phase minus six and it causes a mobilized day, which is brutal, right. Right, right, right? As we know it today. Um, which you can then reset out of or dodge out right. of the Fizz minus six. But uh, most of the units that have Paris CCWs, it seems to be taking the place of um, Electric oh. Pulse. Yeah. And a lot of them, most of them are Para CCW parentheses negative three. And what it, they've said that what it means in that context is the opponent is at negative three. Right. No, I, I I did not make that connection to electric pulse. I mean that makes that makes total sense. Yeah, and then uh, like it is interesting though because there are a couple of Yuxing things uh, that have. Yeah. So if we go to everybody's least favorite uh, addition to Yuxing, this guy has a pair of CCW mm-hmm. at negative six. He has a flat negative three penalty to his opponents for CCW or for CC attack. And he has martial arts level two, which means he negative twelves people. Seems good. Yeah. Just innately. So he neg twelves them, immobilizes them, and then smacks them with a monofilament and close combat weapon. Seems pretty good. The Zan Ying also have that para weapon. <laughs> yeah. Minus six. And uh, you know, they don't have the extra CC skills, but their CC is reasonable at 18. Yeah, you can so tackle a fusilier with that. The way to deal yeah. with somebody. <clears throat> yeah, or, makes, you know. It also makes them a liability mm-hmm. to engage in close combat with in general. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so Peter asks, um, based on the generous uh, change to reset for immobilizing, um, do we think it's going to happen in the future with isolation? I absolutely think they will. I mean... Yeah, make it through that. You can reset out of isolation. Right, but I mean, you sort of can't until your next turn. Yeah, I and mean, it's still, a, it's true. still, a, what you'd still definitely want an yeah. engineer. I mean, I, I think, um, yeah, but I mean, isolation has always been less of an issue. I feel like than the immobilized level two. You know, maybe I mean, they they could theoretically even get rid of isolation and just be more uh, dole out the immobilized more. I That's mean, true. I guess. I right, like if they if they mobilize AU with EM ammo, if you're heavy infantry, as opposed to immobilize B, like 
then you're gonna have to have that phase minus six to get out of it. And people could just end up dumping piles of hey, orders. You know what? Six rolls. They could go all the way to immobilize C or D. <laughs> <laughs> all of the letters. All, all I, the letters. I, isolation does a lot of things right now, though, right? So it does a few things, like it turns off all your comm yeah, stuff. Yeah. Um, you know, it it turns you irregular. Uh, it does horrible things to um, things with mnemonica, right? So, yeah, I mean, like, yep. it, it also is a, it is, it is a one-shot stop. Right, so if, yeah. if it'll, it'll be interesting to see, I, I feel like they'll keep isolation in. Um, I really hope so, it's one of my favorite tools, but, um, I mean, you know, um, adapt, adapt and overcome, but still, uh, still a thing. Yeah, so uh, looking through some more weapons, one thing that they, they failed to define, even though we all know what it means, is the misspelled continuous damage. <laughs> uh, no, no, that's actually, you know where you find that? Huh. Uh, above this in the glossary that's before the states page, continuous damage is uh, right above concealed, and it says after failing a saving roll, the target will lose one point from its wound slash stru structure, and we'll have to keep making the saving roll until it passes the saving roll or until it ends up in the dead state. Interesting. Oh, and then a critical hit with it causes one additional saving roll that does not apply to the continuous damage trait. Interesting. Yeah. Okay. So that's a little bit of extra bookkeeping because you don't want somebody rolling both of those dice at the same time uh, unless they're clearly delineating which one is oh, which. Oh, I see. I see. Yeah. Right. So, so you don't have to like... Right. Okay. Makes sense. Got it. Yeah, so a fire crit causes an extra armor save, but that extra armor save does not trigger right. extra armor saves. Um, that seems more than fair. I'm just, <laughs> you have too much ammo. Yeah, right. <laughs> you're, you're on extra fire. I mean, it's a critical hit with fire. Like, like being lit on fire sucks. Being critically lit yeah. on fire yeah. sounds awful. <laughs> no, right now, I don't think there's anything that can do a uh, continuous... No, there's no... No direct uh, fire damage. Yep. Yeah. Uh, here you go, John. So this is here where we have the viral CCW, where it's just double action mm -hmm. against your BTS. Boom. Yep. Super easy. Yep. Um, so the, the various heavy machine guns. Nothing too... Oh, I was like, an explosive heavy machine gun. First one is the multi antimaterial mode. Um, marks and rifles are all roughly the same. Um... Pistols. So one interesting thing here is that so fatality change, where fatality seems to be just a modifier to the damage of your BS mm -hmm. attacks. So uh, the troops that had fatality level two before um, in uh, appear to in code one just be plus two damage. Oh, sure. But it only works at range, so you won't be um, hitting people with that extra the extra damage if you use a CC attack with a pistol. So that would be what? Um, it's cheese skin, right? So like, I see. Yeah, I see. Like, okay. yeah, yeah. So she's good. Okay. Uh, or the 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 new the new named Umbra. So this um, dodge parentheses two on cheese skin. That's kinematica, basically. Because it's it's not a plus. Yeah, exactly. Because that would be hyperdynamics. Yep. Got it. No, uh, I'm here. I'll I'll pull it up. Or like, yeah, in um, in. You look at uh, yep. Jinko, right? She has dodge plus three and dodge one inch, so she basically has the um, hyperdynamics and kinematica. Uh, yeah, yeah, <laughs> Ducat or like what is that uh, German Rammstein thing, right? Or is that what it is? Yeah, Ducat. Right, yeah, there you go. <laughs> Ducat mace. Um, so your boarding shotguns work exactly as we expected them to, based on the uh, based on mm -hmm. the, the previews. Right, so the, board, the boarding shotguns either burst two damage fourteen AP, so hit mode from before, or a burst two direct small yeah. template. So there was a lot of speculation on whether it was we burst one or burst two, and having shotguns being burst two is a thing. Yeah, that's pretty gross. So your Rodok. With double light shotguns in a lake. 
<laughs> right? Right? Yes. Yes. Yeah. All of the templates. Yeah. Light shotguns have a hit mode now, Pete says. So that's that's a thing too. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So because they've got rid of the impact templates, so they they had to yeah. divide it up, otherwise it would just be a burst right. two chain cult. Um, so this is a change that I'm not sure is uh I, I definitely don't like the multi sniper rifle. The anti material mode is now only burst one. Oh, that's yeah. huge. I'm okay with that. If they lower the cost of the multi sniper, which I don't think they have. I don't. I, I yeah, mean, I yeah. Think there's still one and a half. Sw- yeah, there's still well, one and a half. That makes me hate here. them even more now. Like. Yeah, that is good. Good catch, Obi. That's. I don't. That's a I don't. Pain in the ass. Somebody else pointed that out to me. That's. But, that's uh, pretty poopy. Yeah. If they get, if they get, if it, if it, if, it, if, if they get shock though, I might be okay with that. If they're shock, yeah, yeah, in the future, if they're in yeah. shock. shock, and then oh TVs, yeah, they're... you had to got that extra multi uh, levels yeah. to it. Yeah, yeah, yeah that'd be fine. If it was burst two shock damage fifteen, I'm I'm kind of alright with that. Yeah, Ugh. man, because that. That was really the fun of multi, of the multi sniper, right? That double action ammo. Yeah. But I guess, I guess the, the the flip side is, you know, if you had the choice between a multi sniper and a double action sniper, like ninety nine percent of the time you're just shooting double action anyways. Well, right. I mean, yeah. uh, I, I did the math on it, and basically, arm eight is the break point. Yeah. Okay. Right. So. Yeah. So um, Spitfires. One thing I saw down here is that there's no longer oh it's not under spitfires but the red fury now has spitfire range bands oh wait no it doesn't son of a gun it's still a little bit different yep, yeah it's, it goes all the way out to 40 yeah it's negative three out to 40 um just to be just to be fancy just to have that little extra longer range Shoot. I mean, I it doesn't have shock right now, so you know it's got to have something. <laughs> it's it, it's what it currently has, though, right, John? One more time. Isn't the Red Fury currently negative yeah, three out to forty? Like that. Yeah, it has that longer, that longer band. Um, otherwise, things look mostly the same. Like the hyper, the the HRM, the yeah, the HRMC uh, lost its ammo types because multi chains right now, right? So it doesn't have the. Um, it doesn't, doesn't have, have the, the shot, yeah. It right. doesn't have the anti-material. Yeah, method. Red Fury is uh, um, next three out to forty, <clears throat> and then next six out to forty-eight. Okay, so they still kept those different. I was kind of hoping they'd streamline it and just roll them into one. But oh well, whatever. Um, yeah, Fearbox doesn't have its burst one explosive shot either. That um, might be a code one thing only. Yeah, that seems a little bit weird to leave out, considering that it doesn't have a blast. Yeah, but I think they might just be... I mean, it doesn't have the word multi in front of it, so maybe that's why they got rid of it. I mean, it's not a huge deal if it's just AP plus DA. Like, that seems fine. No, it's just AP. Oh, the, yeah. the, the fear box. I mean, that's yeah. fine. I don't really have a problem with that. Yeah. Um, And that is basically, you know, missions aside, uh, code one. Um. Their reference in the back is a lot easier to use, it seems. Um, it'll take actually playing. But overall, I really like it. Um, you know, it, it, To me, it feels like these are, by and large, what N4 rules are going to be. It's just missing all of the extra equipment that then refers to the additional rules that aren't listed here. Yeah. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see how they tackle things like the uh, the over infiltration and uh, you know like the idea of superior infiltration. Um, right. And I, I do know that they've noticed that they future proof things like the Yan Yan's in, inferior infil- uh, AD drop, where they have uh, it's a fizz of you can have a, a basically a net fizz on that, so it's AD drop with fizz ten or fizz oh, eleven yeah, yeah, yeah. or whatever. Um, yeah. The breakup of that is actually really interesting too, because parachutist and that uh, the airdrop are different, 
So you could potentially have somebody with just airdrop who does not have True. the ability to come in on the table side. Yeah, and they might do that to, to make something like the Yanyan a little bit less. Yeah, appealing. that would be a reasonable balancing thing. Or more random. Or or like giving Hellcats like can you you can imagine like Hellcats being plus six and then not having parachutist. That would be pretty, right. pretty yeah. crazy. Yeah, there's there's a lot of room for uh, yeah. some interesting. I mean, um, like this 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 is this is definitely the right call is... about like you know making getting of nested skills and leveled skills and just sort of. Uh, I mean, grab bagging it on every profile. Uh, it allows for a lot more modularity, which is nice. Right. It has also like unintended, um, mm -hmm. unintended benefits. Or so, just like more combinations too. Yep. Yeah, yep. Yeah. Um, so the one question that we received before the podcast basically had to do with the different game sizes um, the, the size table that they play on and if the game will be still be competitive at the smaller point at the smaller points basically um, and kind of the way I feel about that is like obviously without playing it it's impossible for me to give like a yes um, but I guess I feel like um, they, they will be fun they will be competitive but the meta will yep. be totally different I mean, yeah. Right. So my my experience playing uh, recon definitely would point to that being the case. Yeah, exactly. So like the the unit would you know something with a uh, maybe like a gamma right with a fear box or something mm -hmm. big and long range. If you're playing on a if you're playing on a twenty four by thirty two inch game mat right, then then you're obviously not making the best advantage of right. the ranges of the weapons. Um, yeah, exactly. Like, who needs sniper rifles or missile launchers with their 24-inch minimum range? Like, so I, it's not that I don't think it's going to be competitive, yes or no, but it's it's going to be that the same units are not competitive um, between the different game sizes. Or, or more make or less take those. I think the thing, too, is when you're choosing between, you know, HMG and a multi-rifle, suddenly that multi-rifle might be yeah, more Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. It, yeah, it just changes up not only the the unit but the yeah the profile and what weapon loadouts you might see be be seeing use a bit. Yeah, more. I mean, if anything, I think I mean I've I've made this point many times about recon, but um, if anything, I think it's, it encourages good habit building because um, like, uh, like a lot of people a lot of people that we've come up against in travel tournaments when uh, you take a shot at mm -hmm. over twenty four inches of the combi rifle, they're like, wait, combi rifle shoot that far? You know, yeah, right? and you're yeah. like, yeah, they're at minus three inches out of 32. Um, and it, I think in a smaller, smaller terrain area, like in a 15 point code one game, you'll be forced to use multi rifles and rely on things like combi rifles and those sorts of things. And HMGs will become a liability, if anything. Um, so, mm -hmm. so you end up building these good habits and then really understanding what the range bands look like. And then sort of seeing seeing the HMG for what it really is. It's like a tool that works at a very specific range band and is very, very good at that. But you don't really want to be relying on it to solve all of your problems, which I think a lot of people do right now. Yeah. Yeah, man, the number of times I've surprised somebody by shooting like 30 inches of yeah. a zombie rifle. <laughs> They're like, what are you doing? And I'm like, well, I'm, good. And I'm shooting you. I'm like, burst four in a link. Yeah, I'll right. take this shot. Or my, or or like shooting at things with BS10 guys. It's just like they're like, wait, but they can't shoot at stuff. I'm like, no, no, they can't. Oh man, you're you're a freaking Kaizo too. Or Metros. <laughs> they get, or Metros. Yeah, they both get far more work done than they have any business I mean, doing. That's what they're designed for, right? It's a BS10 rifle that starts right outside your deployment zone. So that's true. That's true. One one interesting thing here is the the mm -hmm. point breakdown. Where it goes, so the three point values are 15, 25, and 30. Yeah. Um, so it's, which is effectively 150 points, 250 points, 300 points. Um, so I, I, it's just interesting because, like, there's a very small gap between 25 and 30, right? That's like one uh, or two models. I mean, yeah, but, but that, that sort of forces a lot of other choices too. Or fives on C. I think that's one thing. Um... I was talking with Joel for uh, uh, 
uh, for uh, chain of command. And uh, one of the things that's nice is because you are forced uh, to only have, you can only have 10 models in, uh, in code yep. one. So, or 10 order generating units. Because of that, suddenly if you have those extra points, you might start putting those into something like the infirmary, where normally you might just think of taking uh, the trauma dock instead right. because it's cheaper. Right. But the infirmary actually can do some things and there's no links, so there's no real need to not take the trauma dock. Um, or, you know, like the trauma dock is not linking with anything, so. Mm. Uh, I don't know. Those, it is a kind of an interesting change that it is only five points. Yeah. Extra, though. I mean, I, I, <laughs> I don't really see that because I mean, you, you can sort of like think of it this way, right? Like if, if I if I told you that we were playing a, a, a tournament at you know one fifty, two fifty, or three hundred, and it was limited insertion, right? In normal N three N four, right? Mm -hmm. You basically just upping the average power level of each trooper. So true. True. Yeah. And man, heavy infantry receive just a pile of buffs directly yeah and directly yeah for here. sure um um not just movement actually that's one thing i really like is that it, it they didn't across the board give everything six two so using uh using yujing as an example zhu yang are still four four mm -hmm. right but um shangji are six two so it kind of gives um the the units which are like more advanced or something there's, there's just an extra level of mm -hmm. distinction between the two right so like now a shang ji is an upgraded zhu yang as opposed to just being a, kind of an expensive zhu yang um and with the like change that. to dodge being in the active turn suddenly that's uh that 14 fizz is a little more interesting mm -hmm. um yeah and also you know with the change to the paramedic yeah. skill that can be more interesting. Right, right. And there is a change E paramedic. So it's like, there you go. Boom. Right. Bring him back. Though the Zhu Yang has the, <laughs> the guy with regeneration, which is fun. True. Now, of course, why the change E paramedic is the same point cost as the uh, change E special operative, I'm not sure. Unless there are some missions where paramedics don't count as specialists. Yeah, 62 Dafay. I mean, it, the, one, the one thing that's mildly irritating about this is that it's no longer an easy mental mapping, right? So you just have, they, they sort of did a little bit of problem pushing here in that it used to be that, like, I can just remember that all medium infantry are 4 2 and then remember the exceptions. Now, like, I have no idea anymore about heavy infantry. So, I mean, True, it, right. Yeah. Heavy infantry could be anywhere. So, I mean, that also messed you up, though, because you're using yes, that mental math true. in uh, one of your TTS yep. games because they've put out so many medium infantry that are yeah, not 4-4. Yeah, so, I mean, I mean, it really just, like, yeah, I mean... It, it's just something you have to pay yeah. attention to now, which normally you'd think, ah, I had this guy, and this is the way he moves. And there's, there's no <laughs> right, classifieds right. either, right? Okay. No classifieds in, in yeah. this. I, yeah. I noticed there wasn't a. Uh, um, I love how they. I just noticed that they use the USB symbol. <laughs> yeah. Which bugs me. Um, bit, well. So one, one thing that I'm curious about. I'm just looking at this Zhang Shi profile. Is um, mm -hmm. Zhang Ji. Um, what? Yeah. I th oh, there we go. It might be a mobile thing. Let's see here. No, it's not. Why would you ever take the basic Shang Yi over the paramedic? The same point cost, the paramedic changes the combi rifle to a multi rifle. The uh, only exception I can think of is that in firefight, uh, you get points for for killing more specialists. Uh, killing more specialists. Well, you get points for killing more specialists, but you also get points for more surviving specialists. So you might take that paramedic and just hope he survives. Um, right. I'm kind of wondering if these. I feel like some of these points might need to get adjusted, like the paramedic and yeah, the special I mean, operative. There's, there's I, I just there. feel like, like they're not going to put all of those up to four, like the hacking device, and just make the hacking hacking device cost half a swig. Well, I mean, there's there's, there's definitely mistakes in your look at the special operative, like pistol, multi rifle, chain cold pistol. Like, what is that? Yeah. Right. So I'm, I mean, so I'm looking on the the mobile app, which is far more accurate. Oh, really? And it's the same okay. cost. 
yeah so the mobile app is is the correct thing to use um so yeah so i'm just a little bit curious how yeah. that's going to pan out because like no right now like i'm taking yeah so it's like i'm taking shangji comp or shangji with multi-rifles because it's the same cost as a shangji yeah, with the combi rifle and, and it's more better well um yeah guys I'm yeah that was a lot of a lot of talking <laughs> uh let's see what else what else we need to uh cover here um yeah i guess just a few reminders right so um uh still a bromad academy mission going on you can paint some some guys with uh fury or impetuous and send it in by friday and then next week uh, we'll announce the winner and review the paint schemes here, I guess, on Tuesday. Uh, Adam and I are doing a uh, Code 1 game for the first time on uh, Thursday. We'll stream that as well. I'll use my crazy cool. multi-camera setup. Um, I guess we'll probably play White Banner versus O12. All right. Sounds good to me. Sounds Dibs good. White I, I'm really looking forward to playing O12 too, so that'll be fun. Uh, you know for sure that there will be a Gamma Lieutenant on the table. <laughs> uh, uh, yep. Obi is streaming some um, uh, sculpting stuff on Fridays, uh, for this Friday, and then uh, we'll see what happens after that, probably Mondays, right? Uh, yeah, that's what I'm hoping to change um, it to. Let's see what else. Uh, next month's Bromad Academy mission, if you're listening to this, you get a quick preview. And it will be uh, paint any Code 1 miniature or play a Code 1 game and tell us about it. And uh, looking, I'm looking for, like, actually, you know, how, how it went. Not just, like, beyond how it went, but also, like, what are your thoughts? Like, do you think it's a, uh, a game in and of itself? Or is it a stepping stone to N4? Um, like, the, 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 more, uh, the more meat to that, the better, I guess. And uh, as always, you get to win blisters or patches, your choice. Anything, anything else, guys? Woohoo! No, well, I think that's it. Obi, thank you yeah. very much for joining us on our very first week. We appreciate you hanging out. No problem. Um, thanks look, for the yeah, thanks. yeah, I look forward to watching you sculpt. Yeah. Thanks yeah. to everybody on the uh, on the stream, especially uh, folks that helped us diagnose some of the echoing problems. That was totally my bad. Still figuring this stuff out. <laughs> um, yeah. So uh, if you if you want to. You know, come on the stream as a guest. I guess shoot us a shoot us a DM or something on Facebook, and we'll we'll figure something out and uh, interview some folks. Um, Sounds good. Yeah. All right. Cool. Well, hey. Um. Yeah. Until uh, next week. All right. Have fun not right. playing games because we're also social yep. distancing. All right. All right. <laughs> All right, guys. Take care. Take Stay care, sane. Guys. Stay safe. Take care.